What's up, everybody, and welcome to Minnow Cup Splat Zones Edition. I'm Jim, and I'm joined here by Toxic. Hello, I'm your co-host. And we're about to get started with round one of Swiss. We've got Red Pacific here versus Haunted Squids in a very spooky matchup on Anchovy Games to start things off. Now, for me personally, I like Anchovy mainly because of the fan and how that just allows a very quick way to make a lockout. But also, as part of defense, you have to, to cover the very far useful side, because without that, they have a quick way to the middle. Mm -hmm. It's a, a very unique map in terms of how control of it is established because of those fans. Uh, you can't just move forward, you can't just like swim and make a jump, like you have to get on the platform and then shoot the fan and then get across. And that can make things really quickly because you can traverse areas that are normally very dangerous to, to go through, but it can also make it a little bit more complicated, make it take a little bit more time to get into that lockout position. Here we go, cool. let's take a look at these comps. Looking and pretty standard. Outside, yeah, pretty standard comps, of course. Uh, Haunted Squids is running triple object shredders, so no BF bombs at 52, or easily, I used to say. Mm -hmm. And RP just playing an extremely meta comp right here. Four shooters, we've got Ray Spam Jet, we've got K-52, Zap with the armor, and a K-Shot for the yeah. missile. I would not expect I'll put like at least 10 misses that game. As I say that, Red Pacific is making a push. They do take the lead back, and now here we are on that fan. Like I said, can kill that, we get on their plot to start a lockout. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's always a little bit of a, a guessing game. Like, where is the enemy front line going to show up first? Are they going to try and come over the fan? Are they going to try and make the jump? Um, it, it gets the backliner looking back and forth both ways and can make it really difficult for them. Looks like uh, the Haunted Squid's trying to stage a retake here. They've popped a couple of specials. The zone has not gone over yet. No picks have gone down. So they're going to get the cap here, but question is can they keep it the the other team has a rake popping out and there's the armor and now it looks like red pacific gonna try and push back in and take it back yeah very fast retake there still neutral though yeah even though haunted squids didn't have control they didn't have the area around the zone and like you just said red pacific was able to take the zone as i say that the k-shot is trying to get a couple kills but do decide to jump back and honestly preserve your special was a good idea mm -hmm. Yeah, it's starting to get into a situation where they're like, ah, I don't think I win this. And uh, jumping back to your teammate, especially if that teammate is still near the zone, fantastic idea. Saves you a lot of time over getting splatted. Yes, we're getting Ooh. splatted. That 52 just staying alive, shooting the straight of that weapon. The inkjet might not get a pick. It does not. And it looks like Haunted Squid still has control. A Ray is out, though, for Red Pacific. As right now, Haunted Squid just take the lead, but only by three points. Man, this T-Tech has had such a hard time pushing in through that area. They're, they've been able to get control, but every time they're trying to push forward, they're just running into a brick wall on that side from uh, Red Pacific. Red Pacific popping missiles, and they're going to start to move out, maybe try and corner this person on the left. Let's see. It looks like it, but the K-Shot does go down. Nice pick there by, again, the K-Shot. Missiles are going to go off, and Haunted Squiz trying to take it to mid. A Ray is out for the side of Red Pacific, and yeah. Oh, there's a disconnect! Yeah. Oh. But they're past uh, they're past 50. I believe that the the DC rules are 50. I correct me if I'm wrong on that one. Um, but they they I believe have to play this out. 
Yeah, unfortunate for a haunted squiz, but Red Pacific, now they need to take this and they need to run with it. As the 52 already doing what we said, getting up on that plat, stopping the zone of control, making sure that Red Pacific stays as back or haunted squiz as back as possible. Got a left flank coming out for Haunted Squids here, trying to split the defense a little bit. And they do manage to do it. Great pick there from Xander to uh, capitalize on their teammate distracting. Yeah, but they're able to get a cap. Get a pick. But, yeah, I don't know how they're going to hold. Yeah, especially with, again, in a 4v3, they need to play really as a team. As missiles do come out all on that end, that kind of move them out. He does save his armor, though. It looks like they might have something here. Two down for this side. Of Red Pacific, as right now the end is trying to stay alive. Ooh, there's a pick that goes down on the left hand side. It is even numbers, and they have a, a, an armor to work with. Let's see if they can get up there and start applying some offensive pressure. If they're able to stagger and, you know, keep it into this kind of 3v3 situation, this uh, temporary 3v3, they, they've got a shot. But it looks like Red Pacific is doing too good of a job of farming up for special and coming in as a team to uh, make that happen. Great picks there from Raz. See if they can get anything more. Oh, they need to keep the zone, though. They really need to keep the zone for the next three seconds or so. There goes New Jet trying to get a pick. Oh, so close. They like, take the lead. That's insane. They do take the lead. The Ink Jet does get a pick, does jump back safely. And now, again, Haunted Squid just trying to win this 3v4 right now. Oh, and this is such a great flank, too. They're distracting oh, many people. Two. They have a triple. That's three. Let right, go, no, Haunted like Squid, putting themselves on the board in a 3v4. What a statement at the end there. Fantastic slaying from everybody on that squad. Yeah, I just want to point out that Keisha on the side of Haunted Squid, his ability to stay patient, wait until the right moment played out. As you saw, get a triple kill and just ended the game right there. I think that was the uh, the T Tech, but yes, because I'm looking at the the numbers. Like, wait, they only got one pick. What are you? <laughs> it was the the uh, Octo shot there. Same colors, trips me up sometimes too. The, the, yeah, there's a point at which you just call every one of them a T Tech, right? Like, it's, it's yeah, just, they all look similar. They all they're do the same thing. They they run at you and shoot and. If, if, you, if they splat you, they do. If they don't, well, they're sad. Oh, they got missiles, so. One or two. Yeah. Well. So, anyway, so that has got to feel good for Haunted Squids. Um, because if they can do that with three players, imagine what they can do with four players. That Whoa. we're going to see right here as Manta Maria. Now, um, Red Pacific did have a very more long range comp than Haunted Squids did. They had that 52, they had that jet. So with those two weapons, they'll be able to control that mass at the middle and just really take control of their bunkers on uh, both sides. Mm -hmm. um, there was a uh, ball point, I believe, on the other side. Or was it a heavy remix or something like that? It was a heavy um, remix. So th there's going to be someone who's going to be trying to control that area. But yeah, with, with two backliners or, or, you know, 52 in a jet, you know, some combination like that. Um, yeah, it was a 52 in a jet. I feel like it's going to be relatively easy for them to walk forward and encroach on the Splatling's space. Uh, Splatling, seeing that they have a 52, probably going to want to be running Object Shredder, or they're going to want to have someone who's running that just so that they can shred that uh, wall before the 52 is able to get into range. Um, it could be a challenge for them to hold there. The, the battle for that bridge is really important on this map because it looks over the zones. If you have someone on that bridge, they don't even have to walk forward and take the enemy bunker. They can just be on the bridge and still have full control over everything that's important in the objective. Yeah, along with, if they do get the bunker, they basically get their street for free. But as we start off the game, we do see a Soda Slosher and a Fire Fin on the side of Red Pacific, trying to go for that double bomb rush, trying to just cap zone as soon as they get it. I think this is kind of smart from Red Pacific going for, uh, you know, seeing that they're running a, a remix, going for a charger, which is going to be a, a tough 1v1 matchup for that uh, heavy there. And the bomb rush, of course, going to be really handy for them for the sake of capping zone. Um, great pick there from LX. And that should open the whole uh, map up for Red Pacific for now. Yeah, they were go three down for Haunted Squids, as right now Red Pacific just trying to get this last guy as far away from the zone as possible. As, as you see right here, the Charger 
and the bucket are both on that bunker, making sure that they cannot climb up that wall. Because if they get up that wall, that's basically free access to the zone. Uh, look at all three of them just swarming around the enemy bunker here, making sure to keep this really important control point on the map. Uh, the slosh are going to be great here because they don't even have to see you. They can just slosh over all of these walls, and there's so many of those high walls that prevent most weapons from being as impactful here. Xander yeah, but as we saw, the end step, we could single it out. As now, right now, the head is kind of trapped. They have a charger on one side, the bunk, the bucket on their bunker. They do pop up defensively, try to move them out. And right now, the, the zone is neutralized, but they might take it back, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that pick definitely opened uh, opened the team up to be able to start pushing forward, and uh, they followed up really well there. So now we're going to see a very similar maneuver coming out of the Haunted Squids, trying to play around the enemy bunker here. Um, got the Zap going back to get some paint, obviously, in the hopes that they have armor by the time that uh, the other team's back in. Um, generally, just try and get special advantage and try and hold a position in front of the zone. Uh, a lot of teams... Yeah, make the mistake of not pushing far enough past the zone. You know, it, if even if Roz goes down there, you know, they are distracting the other team. The other team is not painting the zone during that time. And uh, points could potentially be ticking down. Yeah, I'd say the end of the same exact thing. Does get picked off. It is a one for one. There is a bomb coming out for the side of Red Pacific, but that does go down prematurely as a remix. Even though it does get countered by the charger, it can still make a really big impact on this game. Haunted Squid's in position to take lead here. They only have about 20 ticks to go and uh, no penalty whatsoever. It's going down, it's going down. Basically no threat coming up from Red Pacific in time. Wait, we're, something's coming from the left-hand side that we're not seeing here. Looks like they're just trying to paint it from street and the lead will go over to Haunted Squid's, but the missiles are out and so now it looks like Red Pacific is going to be pushing in. They have armor, they have bomb rush. Let's see what they can do with them. They're going to need yeah, to do it Yeah, but there's a bullet bomb trying to stop it as he does get a pick. As again, Ross trying to go for a good flank here. Just trying to distract them. The charger is really weak and will he get it? He does get one. Just one being one. Oh, just barely. That was such a good pick because the charger was bomb rushing. I think they probably popped the Booyah a little bit preemptively. The, the Booyah, you know, is the, one of the strongest counters that you can have to a bomb rush. You just chuck it down on the ground right where the bombs are falling and the bombs evaporate on contact. So that probably was the idea behind throwing the Booyah as early. But really, it kind of worked out because the Booyah stalled for long enough that the flank was able to come around the backside and the bomb rush never really had the same impact it could have. So really great play there from Haunted Squids. Um, that will be two games in their favor. I believe it's play all three. Uh, so we'll probably still see another round here. Yeah, I don't see people leaving. So um, we're going to Starfish. And uh, obviously the round now gone to Haunted Squids, but uh, an extra win here can still make a big difference in the Swiss stage for Red Pacific's ratings. So. Um, still, of stage, you know, we're going to Starfish main stage, and right, right here, uh, the biggest part, to me at least, is their snipe area in the street. If you can get somebody right under that snipe, any backline, like you saw the last team, the Charger, the Remix, get someone under that street, they're gonna have a really tough time trying to, or they're gonna have a really easy time, I should say, limiting that charge, that backliner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are definitely other ways in, but they're much more circuitous. They take a much longer time for the backliner to get in position. And any time that you're able to burn in splat zones from the other team pushing in is time that you are scoring. So definitely worthwhile either way. Yeah, here we go with that 4K Elia trying to get as much range as possible. And from the side of Red Pacific, as we see, like I said, the Elator, there's a Neo Splash, and Zap and K-Shot, very standard meta comp, I should say. Mm -hmm. And uh, Haunted Squids not changing a darn thing. They have been successful so far with this comp and they're sticking to it. If it's not broke, why fix it? Exactly. So we got an armor ready to go. Xander popping it now and we'll see Haunted Squids start to push in. The missiles come out well-timed there, but none of them do land on zone. And they're able to get a pick Haunted Squids is. So that's two for one going in favor of Haunted Squids. Oh, there's another trade back though. So now it's going to be a battle for the zone with even numbers. Both teams not going to want to overcommit, but they are going to want to try and contest the paint that's going down. Um, so we should start seeing specials again pretty soon with all this paint going down. Yeah, both teams want to not basically expose their hand too early 
as I said, the Red Pacific does take the zone. Missiles do come out a bit too late as they just land in the street, not doing anything. And, Rep and there we go, right again, Haunted Squids getting zone control. But now they need to push up, get in their street, and establish zone of control. Mm -hmm. oh, I really love the patience there from Red Pacific. Fantastic play, waiting for the right moment, baiting the specials out, and then going in and getting a pick. Now, can they hold it? They've got two down. They need to start pushing ahead and getting control of the enemy street in order to maintain this lockout. Oh, but there's a flank in behind them that's going to distract us for a while. A little bit. He's going to jump out. Because that flank could have worked, but the rest of uh, Haunting Squids did not get their attention of, of Red Pacific. So the flank was just called out immediately. So Red Pacific in a pretty good spot here. Turbo going to go down, though, and you yeah, had a great special push there from Haunted Squids to mitigate the damage and they put a penalty on. Got a flank coming out from Raz here, just trying to distract a little bit. There are the missiles ah. coming out for Haunted Squids and Raz again, going for this flank. He does have Inca at the ready. A good spot, just waiting. There he is. And he's trying to get the pick. Doesn't hit the shots immediately though. Oh, he, he doesn't get one, one, but he one, does. But... It is a trade. I think, uh, you know, if they've got their shot on, earlier if they set their aim before the uh, inkjet goes out they probably get the one pick and then have a much easier time getting the second one because they can maintain elevation there so at, yeah definitely uh, getting that one pick a little better but yeah getting damage at least with a, like no a teammate that somebody is in the area so we'll open the two for instead of a uh, one for one those missiles doing a great job of helping red pacific get a penalty back on because it was getting a little hairy there 14 ticks left but lots of specials still being traded and still no clear advantage since uh, the last push. Yeah, this seems to be a pretty even game as Red Pacific and Honda Squids are trading. But as we see, Red Pacific does go two down. There is a jumper, Turbo trying to do something here, but does get taken down. And again, Honda Squids gets control and now trying to push up and just take the win. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a really great position to have Raz if you are Haunted Squids. You love him being here. He's got this inkjet that he can use to potentially contest the left-hand side. He can stop people from going up to snipe just like this. Beautifully played. Turbo is down without having really much of a say in the, in the matter. And now here's an armor coming out. They're going to try and pop it and go in. But Raz is right in position to disrupt from the back line. Fantastic inkjet there. Gonna have to stay a little bit out of the uh, way of the storm, though. Oh, and, well, uh, Red Pacific does finally able to cap. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they use uh, they use the T Tech triangle for a flank and just pushed in. They knew it was a three v three. They knew they had specials and they just went right for it and they got the cap for it. Mm -hmm. And now the penalty going down. At this point, you know, it is still anyone's game. And right now, uh, Haunted Squids forced to respond, and they do respond quickly. They get a pick on the charger, and that enables them to move in and get a quick penalty to uh, stop the bleeding there. Yeah, it's only temporary, though. As right now, Red Pacific is sort of trapped in their street. There's someone watching both, someone watching the right point, someone watching the left point, someone's watching middle. There's not a lot that Red Pacific can do other than just try to bum rush his own. They only have 30 seconds left, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seems like uh, Haunted Squid's one thing that they are consistently successful at doing here is it looks like they are about to take the game. Uh, they, they've been consistently successful at sniffing out the enemy frontliners before the frontliners are aware of their positions. And they've generally been able to get one or two down in most of the neutral engagements that they've taken. Um, so while there were definitely some well-timed pushes from uh, Red Pacific there, and they had some good opportunities to get points on the board. Um, you can see there, you know, Turbo, one of their frontliners, getting picked off a lot more often, and it seems like it's uh, mostly kind of a map awareness sort of thing from uh, Haunted Squids. You know, they're, they're calling out those locations, they're getting sneaky picks. We saw, you know, the T-Tech flanking way into the enemy base and uh, coming up from angles that weren't expected. Um, so I think that made most of the difference in the fights that they were taking. That uh, They were putting Red Pacific at a consistent numbers disadvantage. Yeah, of course. As you saw, as you said, Red Pacific, or Haunted Squids, I should say, they did a really good job of making the frontliners act first. So mm -hmm. they made them uh, uh, reveal their position, made them reveal or use specials first, and they just responded in the best way they could, and that gave them the win. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, lots of really clutch flanks from players like Raz on uh, Haunted Squids. We recall in the 3v4 that they fought at the beginning where they were able to get that nasty flank onto the enemy plat and just draw all of their attention away. Even if they hadn't gotten a triple in that play, they're still drawing all of the attention away from the zone where it needed to be at the end there. So um, yeah, but that triple really heads really up helped. plays. Mm -hmm. Basically ended the game at that point. Yeah, but good. They were, they were close games. Um, mm -hmm. They definitely could have gone either way. So, and just so happened that Haunted Squids just did what they needed to do. And they got the 3 0. I definitely feel like that's one of those sets where you, you go to the other team captain in the chat and you're like, hey, you guys want to be scr scrim partners? That was Those were good matches. Yeah, that's something they uh, that would be very useful. Being able to learn from your opponent, being able to have like constant scrims all the time, it's pretty good. Yeah, getting to VOD review and look at what went wrong, but then getting a chance to correct that in the next time around, you know? You don't have to wait to get randomly matched up in a tournament, you can just try it again against the same opponents and uh, try and uh, catch back up, so... I think that's definitely a great plan for any of these teams here, you know, that are having good matches. Definitely stay in touch with the teams that you played with, you know, keep those friend requests and see if you can't set something up during a normal team practice. I think that's a really good piece of advice for you guys. Yeah, especially if it's a, it's a set like this, very, very close. Being able to have a partner that you know you, you are equal level to instead of getting stomped or doing a stomping is very important to growing as a as a team as a player so i think we are going to uh, if i'm not mistaken take a quick break here in between the sets uh, we're going to be coming back with round two in just a moment um but we're going to need to uh you know let that round finish and have our teams make it into the lobby so in the meantime, we're going to uh, send you off, but uh, don't go anywhere. We'll be back with more Minnow Cup Splat Zones Edition in just a moment.
Alright everybody, welcome back to more Minnow Cup action. We are in Splat Zones only. I am Toxic, joined by my co-host Jemuel. What's up? And we are back here with two more teams, Boston Squid Party and Glitter Gel Pens. The first thing I'd like to say is that these are some fantastic team names that I'm proud to be casting over. Um, I know, 10 out of 10. A little bit strange that Boston Squid Party is not American and in fact claimed to be from Kiribati. I, I don't I don't know if that's that's real or they're just kind of bucking the trend here, but uh they're just bucking the trend, that's what I would say. I feel like even if you are actually from Kiribati, you claim to be from the US just because that's an, an event in American history, you know? So I, 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 I keep it on brand. But Regardless, uh, we're going to be seeing them play on Splat Zone's Wahoo World here. Um, so, well, what do you think of this map, Toxic? Because I it, I feel like this is a controversial one. Okay. It's all right. It, it, it's all right, in my opinion. I know it's my opinion. I like it more than Mako Mart. But, because it's more unique than Mako Mart. But I feel like the main thing with this map is that bridge that opens and closes. As you know, there's a timer right next to it, so every few seconds it switches. 
So I think that bridge will inhibit a lot of the pushes that both these teams can do. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not a huge fan of it as a frontliner because there are very limited options for pushing into mid most of the time. And I think the reason that I like splat zones more than the other modes here is that the bridge is just available all the time and you always have access to mid. I think that really opens this map up a lot more Makes it a lot more fun to watch. Let's see what we've got going on here. Yeah, but there is a Octo Rush on the side of Gloria Gel Pen, which would be very interesting. As Octo Rush, no for causing distraction, getting behind them and getting a pick or two, uh, which allows the rest of the team to push in, get a good cap. As you see here, Gloria Gel Pens, they do have only, they do get to 92, but looks like Boston Split Party is trying to hold as quick as possible, but they do go two down, a two for one trade. It might be time for Glitter Gel Pens to get some control over the rest of the area near his own. Mm -hmm. They are able to get control of mid here, and it looks like there's a still a fight going on. Left side, uh, the Boston Squid Party just never really let go of their right hand side here. Able to get a pick back and able to accelerate their pushback into mid, but that brush going to slow it down a little bit. Zone yeah, still very contested. They don't have solid control yet. And it uh, looks like a member of Boston Squid Party going down there. So they're going to start to try and recap using this Booyah Bomb and some paint. Yeah, there goes Glitter Gel Pens. They do get zoned, but like I said, they're not getting air around the zone. And like, like you see right here, Boston Squid Party, they're able to just sneak in from around corners and get picks left and right. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting choice from both of these teams to run, uh, I think, the, both the Tri Slosher and the Kensa Pro. Um, neither of those weapons have a fantastic paint output, and they're playing it more in favor of having strong slaying weapons. Um, so, you know, a lot of the times in zone, you really try to favor painting weapons so that you can maintain control of the zone even if in, in a neutral state. But here, they're just trying to, they're just trying to kill each other. Yeah, you might, you may not have a lot of paint, but you'll need that much paint if your enemy's dead, so it makes mm -hmm. sense. Well, let's see if they can uh, establish a lockout here. Glitter Gel Pen's taking control. Uh, it looks like they're going to try and collapse on this player on the left-hand side here. Armor does get popped, and they're just going in. They're just going all the way in. Um, great hammer there from... Uh, I can't read the tag, unfortunately, but uh, that player, the Octobrush... <laughs> Yeah, but that was, if you saw there, there was a armor, there was a player that was saved by armor. Because he didn't hit by the stamp, but he didn't die, and he went, and the brush went right past him. Whew. Junior kind of getting away with their life there miraculously, and is able to sit back here and keep his own painted. They're about to get through their uh, penalty here, but the Junior forced to drop down. Can they keep enough paint on the zone? It's just the Charger looking at the zone for Boston Squid Party right now. I don't know if they can hold it. Yeah, but the junior is there for support right on the on the right side oh. of the bridge, but it looks like Glitter Gel Pens does take over them. Just one point away for Boston's oh, nice party. Save. But yeah, that snipe is definitely going to open things up. Out go all of the specials. Honestly, probably more specials than they needed at that point. They, they're just like, get off the zone now. Yeah, and, they uh, don't want they don't want Glitter Gel Pens anywhere near it. So they pop everything to make sure they have enough just pressure to force everyone back. Mm -hmm. Now the the one potential disadvantage to a play like that is that now you don't have any specials to maintain the lockout. So as soon as uh, Glitter Gel Pens gets a special or two, like like saw, um, now you don't really have anything to contest that with, and you're forced to back up. Um, a lot of the time, what you want to do instead is stagger your specials a little bit. So you use maybe one or two to get the retake, but then you have another one so that when that hammer comes out, you've got something to throw back at them. Beautiful oh, double. Nice double wider edge culture. And that's huge. That's going to give Glitter Gel Pens the lead and a hugely important position of power going into what could be the last push of the game. Missiles going out. They do get a great pick on Boston Squid Party. So now they're going to have to back away from the zone a little bit. See if but Glitter Gel Pens does keep it. The armor does go out. Bomber just come out. The brush does go down. And right now, Boston Squid Party, they do recap zone against all odds. And right now, it's looking to, like I said, get get on their plat. Get on that, get on that left side. Just make sure that Glitter Gel Pens cannot move anywhere near the zone. Mm -hmm. 
There's a lot of action going on on the zone here. Uh, neither team really successful at pushing past the zone to establish control and, and really lock the other team out. They're having to con constantly double back and retake and apply penalty and do it all over again. Yeah, Great but pick good pick by that K shot. And looks like Monster's Good Party, they're in position to hold, but I don't think they will be able to as the brush oh, oh, does go down. That That's might two just down. do it. Yeah, but with... There's not many points left to go. The Glitter Gel Pens needs to make a desperation push. And with Pat on this really annoying flank here, I don't know if oh, they have the time to get the go up there. Oh, just barely. Glitter Gel Pens was half, like, half a second away from taking zone. But from the jaws of defeat, uh, Boston Squid Party does take, does take the lead and the game. It should be an interesting set here. Lots of back and forth going on in that match. Um, 13, 13 <laughs> <laughs> had one, He had one game plan in mind and he accomplished it. Oh, goodness. Um, you know, there, there were some situations there where I was thinking like, man, they've only got like one person on the zone. How can they possibly hold? I guess that's why. Uh, <laughs> yeah, anytime, uh, anytime Boss Squid Party wanted to do something, guess what? Leo had missiles. They wanted to use a special. Guess what? Leo had missiles. There was a pick. Guess what? Leo had missiles. So they were just ready at any time they were needed. And missiles are nasty on that map because there are only so many places you, you can get into mid from. So you just aim it at one of those places and now it's completely shut down. You know where those players are. There's no flank going to happen. So you can just focus on one of the sides and kind of divide and conquer. Yeah, speaking of Divide and Conquer, we are going to Gobi Arena. Now, the big thing about this map is that bunker area. Because there are two main entrances to the enemy plat. There's the gridded area and there's the long sneaky side. With If one team can get on that bunker, they can shut out the other team very, 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 very easily. Yeah, um... You can, you know, if you get a really strong position, you could potentially jump someone over onto the enemy bunker. Um, but generally, the way I was uh, taught this map mode by a, a very seasoned coach, Hamron, um, they, 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 he always said that Siege uh, loved this map mode, that this is one of their best map modes, and that they could take any DivX team here. And what what they would always say is, don't over push, don't go so far into their base that you're putting yourself at a disadvantage at any point in time. Just hold at like the 75-25 mark for your lockouts so that you're taking the safest positions you can while still keeping them pushed a bit far back from the zone. Um, typically the way that maps are designed in this game, there is a, a kind of danger zone when you start pushing into the enemy base where the enemy base does have a lot of significant positional advantages to take over you. Um, and so if you get too far in, uh, it's easy enough to just sit behind the shield and mow you down. Very interesting comp from Boston Squid Party with the Hydra and the Sploosh. One weapon very aggressive, very in your face, and the other one very defensive, wanting to stay back, wanting to get their armor, wanting to just play defensive. But as I say, that Glitter Jelpa does get a pick, and here we go, the end up. It's trying to push up, looking for somebody. Does seem to that right on that right side the hydra is on the bunker and here we are just sharking trying to get a pick if possible yeah flan playing pretty aggressively so far in this game um seeing that the uh the oh goes in for a pick on the uh, k shot here and the k shot able to get that down good job to pat j firing some missiles to clear them out from the left hand side and then just take zone for free um i was gonna say you know Interesting play there from the bucket player on Boston Squid Party to try and take the enemy hoop that early. Extremely aggressive play. It does end up getting punished for it, but that might signal their intentions for uh, later on in the match that they're really trying to prioritize that side and get some pressure on the Hydra as soon as humanly possible. Yeah, wanting to get that Hydra out Sorry, of not, I, I've got that backwards. The Hydra's on their team, trying to get them uh, yeah, controlled get the at the top left. Yeah, yeah. My bad, my yeah. bad. <laughs> like, like I was going to say, if you can get that the enemy hoop, you can basically cut off their bunker as quick as possible because the hoop can basically jump over to the bunker 
any time, which leads to very, very aggressive plays, especially what the, that, and those are the plays that Sploosh wants to accomplish. Mm -hmm. And one thing that they might also be thinking is that with the Hydra watching, you, you are able to play a little bit more aggressively because you've got cover fire wherever you go. You're just kind of a, a little guardian angel shooting over your shoulder. Yeah, speaking of guardian angel, they're gonna need it right here as there is, there is gonna be two down. The Hydra, like I, like you see, on that on that close side, just trying to put as much pressure as possible. Yeah, impressive how much they've been able to stall the zone here with just like a K-Pro watching. K-Pro, not a very high paint weapon, um, but it was able to stall for a pretty long time there and prevent a, a lot of points from going the other way. The other way. Um, so good job from them. Armor goes out for Italics. Siding to back all the way up though, so uh, they're gonna have to fight this in a 3v4 at the moment. Or a 3v1 as you should say, the Sploosh by himself. Will he escape? He does not escape. That's a full wipe for like gl glitter gel pens as right now. They need, like you said, go a far up, up to a certain point to exert pressure, but not too far to where they're putting themselves in danger. Mm -hmm. I like this shark here. It's a little bit tricky to be staying there in the rain. Um, great rain to clear out that left-hand side for uh, Boston's good party. I would expect them to be starting to push out from that direction with the space that they've earned for themselves. And there's the hammer going out from the left-hand side, but it goes down really quickly. And actually, Glitter Gel Pen's able to maintain control for a good long time there. The push started, I think, like 20 or 30 ticks ago, and it took them a long time to get to the zone. And it was very short-lived that they were able to take it. So Boston Squid Party not hurting too bad. They've got a couple of mines now on the zone, and that'll really delay their ability to take the, the uh, zone back. Um, nobody opting to take top left, though. So it looks like Glitter Gel Pens might be able to stage a retake from there. The armor comes out. Maybe they're just hoping that the Hydra can hold them back, but the missile's going to get in their way so badly there, and Glitter Gel Pens able to recap. Yeah, the biggest, the biggest counter to the Hydra, like you said, is missiles. Because it takes so long to charge that just by popping missiles, it makes them move away immediately. And I see the hammer does come out, and they do cap zone, but the spooch goes down to a lucky bomb by There Flam. was a bomb there. <laughs> you gotta watch out. Yeah, it looks like Glitter Gel Pen's trying to hold on to the lead here. As the bucket trying to slosh and zone, he does get it. Looks like it won't be for long, as, again, another back and forth between the two teams. One does go down, Zap does go down, and right now, Pat... He's trying to just establish control, get a pick or two, but the brush is there, and he does scare him away. Oh, able to get Leo's back there. Leo not paying enough attention to what's coming around the hoop, and Pat able to get a solid double. Popping missiles right away, maybe trying to enable uh, Rona up there to get in and uh, start up a flank, maybe trying to give them vision. Feels like a little early, considering they just got three down, but uh, we'll see what they're able to do with it. Yeah, those missiles out the other team. They're gonna need to retake here. Oh, they that is too down for Boston. Lead, but... the hammer does go off. Oh, oh, oh my, does get shut down. The K-Pro takes it by himself, and now the K-Pro just needs to hold zone. Leo is there. This missile is almost at the ready, and it looks like Boston's going by Michael to steal this game from the. He might be able to steal this game. 20 ticks. It's going to have to be a desperation push for Boston Squid Party. They do not have time to farm specials. Their Hydra is down. down. This is one thing that they will have on their side. And, oh, the zone is fluctuating, but oh, not by... One and the K-Pro just barely holds on for life as Boston Squid Parties does come up a little short. Whew. Missiles at the end doing a great job of pushing the enemy team away, but all they needed to do was paint the zone. And so they're able to back up and keep doing that, and they held just long enough. Yeah, that Booyah Bomb by the K-Pro did stall it out long enough in order to basically hold on to that lead. Very close one there. Yeah, here we go to my personal favorite map in the game, 13 Shipyard. As with zones, there's a there's two really big areas. You gotta no three. I'm sorry, you gotta worry about. You gotta worry about that top snipe. You gotta worry about that right side. You gotta worry about that left side. These many different options to go into zone. It's gonna be very tricky for these teams to figure out which way they're going. Okay, how should we respond? Okay, how many people are they gonna send? Okay, what special should we use right here and when? 
This is a, another one of those maps where it's really easy to over push. You get pushed past the enemy snipe, you get into that pit area, and you have no positional advantages over someone who's up top shooting down at you. And they can get out and shoot down at you from like three different directions. It's just a bowl and you're in the very bottom of it. And so um, generally, um, unless you get a second wipe, you, you don't want to see teams pushing ha into that bowl or pa past that bowl until they've got more of an advantage. You want That's what uh, Devi loves to call the Great Wall of Sturgeon. Um, yeah, you don't want to push past that snipe because, like you said, they can drop down from like four different directions. Now, once that second wipe comes in, then you can get somebody on that snipe. Then you can get somebody on that top left side. Then you can get somebody in the street. With that, then you should be able to have a really, really good lockout. Because mm -hmm. um, those are some really nasty positions once you're able to get into them. But off of one wipe, generally, you're never going to be able to get a frontliner in that far. Yeah, but we'll just see, see, you'll just have to wait and see what these teams decide to come up with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I generally do like this map mode just in, in its, or yeah, this map in general just because there's so many different ways to maneuver around. Even if you go out on the right side, you can rotate to the left side with cover the entire way. Um, it's It gives you a lot of options to maneuver while still having some nice open sight lines for the backliners. I think it's pretty balanced. And as we see, Glitter Gel Pens decided to go back to the Octoburst, presenting the, the K Octoburst to go with the new bow for those missiles, for those thickens, which can really help speed speed up that process of getting a lockout the thing is they want even more missiles than leo has already been putting out there as he fires their his first missiles what 13 seconds into the match Ooh, oh he does go down to an unlucky bomb. bomb yeah but as you see right there what Bruno just demonstrated the underside of sturgeon can be really big because you can go in one way you have, your enemy has to predict one of four ways you gotta come out. So it could be very big for getting good flanks. Boston Squid Party is pushing in pretty far here. They've got some people committed into the... Oh, the Octopress with a crazy flank! They do go down, but they definitely distract a little while to see if they can get anything done on the other side of the map. Looks like nobody else has gone down, though. Um, so just a unfortunate play there for the Octobrush. They are going to be able to neutralize. Can they cap, though? They the haven't done this yet. It is two down for the side of Boston Squid Party, as like you, like, I, like I said before, the Octobrush using that underside to sneak around as quick as possible, and that does give Glitter Gel Pens the lead, or the uh, the score, I should say. Mm -hmm. Glitter Gel Pens, not a lot of slaying going on right now. About half the numbers of Boston Squid Party, the, the engagements have just not gone their way yet. But uh, they stand to be in a pretty good position on this next one. So let's see if they can get something more done. Octobrush just solo missile. They're like, get out of here. We don't want you here. They Boston really don't want that looking to maintain their lead. If they get cap here, they put in a penalty right before Glitter Gel Pens were able to retake lead. And that is exactly what happened. Yeah, and as we see here, Boston's wood party is... Boston Squid Party is just staying in mid, trying to maneuver around. But as you can see, they jump and able to just stay back, paint up, and then use your specials. Like you said, like you see, missiles going out, another missile going out, another armor coming out, and this might, and they do cap zone off of that. Mm -hmm. It is so imperative, and I think that was a great example there, not to try and fight from the zone. It's a very visible, exposed area, and on top of that, as soon as you go down, you paint the zone for the enemy team. So, you know, Boston Squid Party trying to push up and get control of the zone there, but never actually were able to get forward past it. And so, Blair Gel Pen's able to respond right away. So, lucky bomb by control. Lucky bomb by Pat to get rid of those missiles. But there's an arm coming out. But the brush does flank, gets the junior. Now it's two down for Boston Squid Parties. It looks like Blair Gel Pen might take the lead as I say that. The art Boston Squid Party is fighting back. The K Pro is dancing around, trying to stay alive, but it does not. And J Glitter Jumpers does take the lead. Yeah, just not paint on that weapon to be able to contest the zone in a two v three situation. So, ultimately, they do end up going down. Um, we've got uh, a potential knockout here on the board. If there, nope, nope. There's the the penalty reversed. So. 
Good job from Boston Squid Party for staving that off, but they are going to have to uh, make a solid push here. And again, you know, staying on the zone here, a risky play because it's not pushing the enemy team back very far. If the missiles go off, they all land on the zone. Uh, there are a lot of uh, problems that I think that's causing for them as a team. Right now, though, they were able to win a couple of fights. So Glitter Gel Pens, uh, see if they're able to do anything with this, but it looks like the points are going to keep ticking down, at least for the time being. And there's a jump out, so Boston Squid Party will take the lead on this push. Now, can they hold it for 20 more ticks? Glitter Gel Pens, desperation mode. They need a push, and they need it very soon. Well, he does get one. Trying to get another one, but he has to back off. And right now, they, there is a penalty applied on Boston Squid Party. He's at the triple zig zone. Oh, oh, another pick by the K-Pro. Trying to go for a third. Italics with a fantastic aggression gets oh, two. Yes, Pops a booyah. And is me. able to booyah. Oh, and, and stays alive. Beautiful a... play there from Italics. It's some, you know, you look at the, the montage moments and you see the Slayer getting all the picks by themselves. But a lot of the time, the way that it actually goes down is the Slayer is smartest when they get what they can and then let their teammates do the rest. Um, don't, don't complain that your teammate stole your quad. Thank your teammate for helping you stay alive and be able to keep the pressure going forward. Now Boston Squid Party in potential range to win the game right here, right now. Only 10 ticks left. That's like five seconds. Well, right, here they go. Boston Squid Party is a general hole. Three, two, one, and that is going to be the game. Great job by Boston Squid Party is taking the game. And like you said, Italics getting into that, getting into their court, getting that double. Because popping Booyah to stay alive was pretty insane, but having the teammate help them, which pushes Glitter Gel Pens even further back, was a great play. No taxation without representation. We are pouring all of those pens into the Boston Harbor. They're able to take it at the shipyard, fittingly enough. <laughs> okay, that's, that's, that's pretty funny. So congratulations to Boston Squid Party. Very close 2-1 win. I'm sure they're really happy about that one. And definitely, you know, much respect to Glitter Gel Pens for putting up such a good fight. I'm sure that's going to be great VOD review material for both of the teams there. Hopefully y'all are able to go back and learn something from that. Yeah, it was, that was a really great, um, really great set. Very back and forth. It really did go down to the wire in the last game as Boston took one good play. That's how most games take. One good play and the game just snowballs from there. Mm -hmm. there there's something to be said. I, I, FLC talks about how uh, the the modes are really just high watermark pushes. Uh, by that I mean the, the team that wins is the team that made the best single individual push. And that can be hard to conceptualize when you, you look at splat zones, because it's like, what, the, the time is just ticking down. It's just whoever gets to 100 first, no matter how many retakes that takes. But the way that penalties are set up, it really kind of is just who was able to get the strongest single push to get their, uh, their points all the way down. Um, and so, you know, that one push, that literally is what wins you the game. It, it's almost you know, as clear as it is in like Rainmaker, where the, the objective resets every time you don't succeed. Yeah, that Oops. was... Uh, we might actually be getting set up for our uh, third match here, I think. Um, but... Uh, hmm? I'm sorry, I've got a car alarm going off. I'm going to mute for a second. <laughs> All right, I think they took care of it. <laughs> All righty. Coming up on round three.
Welcome back, everybody. We're here with round three of Minnow Cup Splatzones Edition, and we're going to be seeing Bamboo Dragons versus Ink 87. Uh, Bamboo Dragons from Spain and Ink 87 from the US, if the country codes that they put are actually accurate, and we have seen sometimes they are not. But <laughs> may or may not have someone from Antarctica playing Splatoon with us today. Um, can neither confirm nor deny that that is, that is the case. Well, we'll see eventually, will we? Yeah, I mean, it, I figure if they actually are from Antarctica, the internet's probably not great, so we're probably going to be seeing a lot of lag coming out of them. I don't, I don't think they're actually from No, I think they're from the U.S. Hopefully. Hopefully. And anyway. <laughs> <laughs> We've got uh, most of our players ready to up here. They're just making their last adjustments. So while they load in, let's talk about Splat Zone's Piranha Pit, which is where our first game's going to get played here. Use the conveyors. That's it. Conveyors. Um, this is, I will say, one of the few map modes where I feel like Splashdown isn't that bad. Especially if you can use it on the top of it and then come down. That's the entire zone right there. Mm -hmm. And uh, being able to use it from the conveyors puts you high up enough that a lot of weapons can't reach you to cancel it. Or even if they have the range, if you're right over the top of them, they might not have the angle that they're able to aim upwards to hit you. Well, we'll have to see if the new team brings Splashdown, as we are inside with game number one. Let's see what they're bringing. All right, well, all of that was irrelevant. We have no Splashdowns. If double... Flatling and a tent from Ink87. That's a really interesting comp, and I want to see how that plays out. Yeah, it looks like the tent's main job is to be in the middle and just force everyone backwards. And then the mini will use missiles and burst bomb just put a lot of pressure on the other team. As right away, there is a two down for Ink87 as Maple Dragons do take the zone first. They're still fighting for the right-hand zone just to keep it neutralized and prevent a score from going out. On a double zone map, not necessarily a terrible idea, especially with two splatlings able to hold it down on bump. And they just haven't been able to... The Bamboo Dragons have not been able to get a lot of points on the board because of how much stalling went out. They didn't uh, force the splatlings out of play, and now going back the other way a little bit. Tent does go down there, and the Zap too. And so finally, that uh, back line of the uh, Ink, Ink 87 will fall. Yeah, it looks like Bamboo Dragons is doing a really good job putting pressure where it needs to be and just holding an area. As you can see there, they got the conveyor. They got the, the conveyor next to where, he, where the enemy drops, and they're just holding down. As you see, the case versus the tent. He does missile to keep the tent out of, out of play. It's right here. Again, like you can see, they're just moving around. Make sure they're not sitting in one place. Goes after the tent, and the tent going to win that one. So that will be a numbers advantage, finally, for Ink 87. Should be able to cap the zones off of that. I've been curious to see how they're going to play around the tent here. Um, th there's potentially some inspiration here from a, a comp that Climb used to run where they run Umbrella and put the uh, Mini or the Heavy right behind the Brella so that the uh, Flatling is able to play more aggressively because their charge is covered by the Brella shield. Um, doesn't look like they've really been playing that way so far. It looks like the Tent has been playing a pretty traditional role here of trying to distract while their teammates take flanks. Um, but that is an interesting kind of potential option that they have. And yeah, they, they, he does use hammer prematurely, but there's gonna be three now for side of Bamboo Dragons right now. But if the tank can get set up by the spawn, by that spawn in the this would be a really good push for Ink 87. Who got a double ink mine over there to try and uh, suss out anybody who tries to come out drop. Unfortunately, the, the K, K52 doesn't care, it just goes. Um, teammates able to collapse on that one, so good job to Ink 87 for covering. Oh, walk forward and take the trade for them. That was such a rough position to put them in. They're going to fall on the zone or they're going to splat you. Um, and we see yeah. also uh, a really important piece of counter tech for the tent umbrella is uh, the K-52 is putting out a wall. 
And if a wall meets a tent shield, they cancel each other out. Well, it's a lot less resource intensive to throw a wall out there than it is to put out a tent shield, and it takes a lot less time. So the, the wall is just kind of going to beat the tent shield a lot of the time because you're using a lot fewer resources to get rid of it. Beautiful slaying push there, and that's going to give Bamboo Dragons really solid control and stagger their team really, stagger the enemy team really badly off of that push. As we see, Bamboo Dragons doing what they do best, just sitting there making sure that all all entrances are covered, and it's the... Again, that tent is trying to do something here. They do pop hammer. Might find the pick on the heavy. So far, dodging it does not, and the heavy managed to survive just barely long enough for our teammate to, to come to help him. As, and you see, the tent is not able to really establish what it wants, which is just to say, hey, I am here, deal with me or else. Really get great evasiveness, but I think that was Risotto on the uh, the heavy remix. Just, it's not easy to do with a weapon that has to charge. That's relatively slow. Um, oh, sorry, it's. Uh, I think I might have got that wrong. Oh no, that was the mini. I was like, ah, this is confusing. I always get minis and heavies really badly mixed up when I'm looking at them because yeah, <laughs> they look the same color. But. Clean, almost wiped there from Ink 87, and I think the Zap is on respawn. So this is a great opportunity for Ink 87 to start holding them back. Nice pick. Yeah, as you see right here, the, there it is, the tent just protecting the heavy, trying to get a charge off. It looks like this is Bamboo Dragon's last chance. All you gotta do is take zone, they will take this game. There is a Booyah, there is Missiles, there is a trade, there is two down, three down, and that's gonna be the game, maybe. And there it is. The full wipe, Bamboo Dragons will take game one. It would have been an absolutely wild hold if Tooth was able to get that 1v3 at the end there. Um, that's the sort of thing you really don't see anyone able to pull off very often. I was right, it was Risotto. Okay. I I am... <laughs> I second-guessed myself a little bit there, but... We were right in the first place. So, great job to Bamboo Dragons, able to hold on there and uh, take that game. So, I have to think, you know, there's so much setup required for Ink 87 to get in with that kind of a comp. Um, because they don't really have a weapon that's in their comp that is designed to hold forward and start fights. Um, the tent is kind of the closest that they've got, but instead of holding forward, it's more of a slowly drifting forward. Um, it takes a while to get there, and uh, the enemy team going to be able to set up with something like a K-52 and a wall with flankers. Like It was a slow-moving comp, and I feel like they had fewer opportunities to start scoring pushes because of it. Um, when they did get a scoring push, they made it pretty close. I think they got a good two of them in. Um, but I think because of uh, the better maneuverability that Bamboo Dragons had, just the, the literal movement speed that their, their teammates had, um, they were able to keep better control of the match and adapt a little bit better to what they were seeing. Yeah, especially, like you said, that's a very, they did have very slow-paced comp, meaning Bamboo Dragons more in your face, more fast paced, more we're gonna run at you type of comp. They didn't have time to set up because if a comp like that gets set up, gets in position, gets in place, you're not moving them. You're just not gonna move them. So Baby Dragons did a really good job of just seeing what their enemy comp was saying, hey, they have heavy in a tent. If we hold forward, we can literally win any fight. Yeah, you have to hold forward in the right way, but uh, in a coordinated environment, definitely possible to just say, we're going to take this fight because we know that we are going to win and to decide to do that as a team on the spot and go for it. Yeah, here in the game two, let's see if Ingrid says going to change up. And they do. They bring an entirely different comp. They have a, a flat charger. They have a Nautilus and they have a Sorella Brella, a very uncommon weapon, you see, as Brella has kind of fallen off of after the nerfs it got. Mm -hmm. um, but you can kind of see, you know, where they're coming from here. They're switching from the mini to a more aggressive Splatling in the Nautilus, 
They're switching from the tent to a more aggressive Brella in the Sorella Brella. And uh, then well, probably just a, a map mode adjustment for the backline player here going with the Charger. But it, it does have, you know, more of a focus on getting picks. So they're trying to fight a lot harder uh, with this comp than they were with the last one. Yeah, but even though they give more aggressive comp, they do, they are going to go, I mean, Baby Blue Dragons does get under 50, but as you see, Inke 7 does take control and they might be able to get a good push out of this with a very mm -hmm. aggressive comp. Yeah, we'll see. We need, you know, the, the pressure to be coming out from the angles that Bamboo Dragons is going to try and push in from. Um, and it looks like it fell apart in mid a little bit there while Tooth was over here on the right hand side. Um, that duel, you know, not super relevant to the objective, and it looks like their teammates were not able to hang on on the left side. So, great pick there. Punishing the overaggression is Inc. 87, but they cannot push into their street just yet. They don't have it clear. The trade goes down with the inkjet. Typically, that happens when uh, you're trying to inkjet in a position that's a little bit more aggressive than you want it to be, a little bit more exposed than you want it to be. Uh, typically, you want those picks to be, you know, something where the enemy team doesn't have any say in it. Yeah, that, is, that was a really good pick for the side of Baby uh, uh, Dragons getting that inkjet out of there. And right now, Ink 87 just trying to cap zone here as the Brella is sitting here just trying to be a distraction. And right now, Baby Dragons doesn't really have to worry about him too much. They do decide to go after it, and that is a mistake. Raf Raphael, uh, Raffle now going in and bomb rushing. Don't think there were many players in that area for the bomb rush to impact, but it'll get some paint down at the very least. Uh, and they're still here being a nuisance on the left side of the map, drawing attention away from where Bamboo Dragon is going to be able to paint the zone. So this might actually lead to lead here. What for a good. Yeah. Yeah. Double push and that's there. That's exactly what the Brella wants to do. It wants you to look at it. It wants you to spend as much time as possible looking at it. And what you saw right there, the Nautilus did rotate and they get the pick. And right now, Ink 87 is trying to end this game. Only 10 ticks to go. 9, 8, 7. Trying to. Ink, or Baby Dragon trying to push in all they can, but they'll, they won't be able to. And that's going to be a win for Ink 87. Really, really solid Nautilus play there from Tooth. They did exactly what that weapon is designed to do, which is see where your opponents are engaged and enter the fight before they have any response to it. They went up seeing that everyone was focusing the Brella and got two picks. They went back over to street after they got picks on left and were able to hold the players off as they were chasing the K shot. Just really great player mentality there. Wait for your team to set up a good position for you to take the fight from, and then just go and finish the fight before anyone has any time to react. Um, it's one of the best skirmisher weapons in the in the Brella, paired with one of the best Slayer weapons, the fastest times to kill in the Nautilus. Uh, and that was a fantastic showcase of how that pairing is supposed to work in combat. Yeah, boy, you see that you see that pairing again as we are going to go to a game three, a tied one one to the set, and we're going to Inkblot Articavi and Gem. What are your thoughts on this map? Zone's Inkblot is really interesting because it's a, a massive, huge zone. But the amount of time that it takes to get from uh, spawn to the zone is relatively short. So even, you know, most of the, the really big zones in this game, like uh, I'm thinking Kelp Dome, for example, they're really annoying because it takes so dang long to cap that you might get an advantage and still not be able to cap the zone in time. Um, but Inkblot, I don't think is quite that same way. Uh, you basically need to hold control of the left side and hold control of the right side. And doing that isn't the hardest thing because it's just a ch relatively short map. It doesn't take an awful long time to get to mid. Um, and it's also really difficult to push up very far past the zone. The frontliners really don't have the easiest time getting up onto the enemy plat. And even if they get there, there's not a lot of cover. There's not a lot of a positional advantage they're going to be able to earn unless they can get all the way up into the enemy spawn, which is more of a, a two wipe sort of situation. So. It's very scrappy. There's always a fight happening over the zone. 
um, because everyone's just kind of funneled into there. Um, but it's just a big enough zone that it's not going back and forth constantly like you see in some double zones maps. So uh, I think it's a very interesting design. It's a very unique design in Splatoon 2's Splat Zones maps. Um, and it's one that you kind of have to have a unique strategy for going into it. Yeah, we'll have to see what those strategies are as we are going to game three. And there is a Hydra for Bamboo Dragons and an E-Leader for Ink 87. And it looks like they're just trying to take the zone without trying to engage as much of it as possible. Yeah, it looks like a, we've got a, a flank on the left here from the Brella, just kind of what we expect to see. And a great pick there from Tooth. Once again, drawing aggro with the Brella, and then Tooth shows up to finish the fight. Fantastic play there. You have to imagine that callouts are involved there. That's just good team communication and good coordination. Yeah, good coordination, but these teams need as, again, this Brella just sitting on this left side trying to cause distraction. You just see two of them, and instead of trying to push out, just stays bunkered down, covering some mink, just putting, being as annoying as possible, basically. I do like the decision to put the Hydra over on the right-hand side, because that is one of those things that can actually threaten this Brella. Um, if the Brella lets the shield get hit for too long at that long range, that could be a problem, but... We do eventually collapse on it at great cost. Uh, Risotto, meanwhile, moving back over to the left-hand side. Currently, Bamboo Dragons at a bit of a stagger. Um, you know, the numbers look even, but they've got some respawns coming in. Um, here comes the armor. What can we do with it? It doesn't look like they're in much of a position to push just yet. Might have been a little bit on the early side. Got the K-52 trying to move in, and Tooth is caught out by the Hydra there. So three down... Bamboo Dragon's going to move the Hydra up on the top mid and try and hold from here. This is a really powerful hold for the Hydra. It can reach so many different positions on the enemy plat, and that's going to make it a lot easier for these frontliners to come and try and pitch a tent here. But the K-52 over pushing gets taken out by the K-Pro, and now this is going to be Ink-87 trying to move back onto the zone. Yeah, Bamboo Dragon's do take lead. Both like this K-Pro trying to get a pick, but he does go mm. down by the tri -slosh. And not it'll... painting their feet enough, don't have an escape route out of there, and Bamboo Dragon's going to maintain and going to keep pushing past this penalty into the remaining scoreline. Yeah, they're at 40, and it looks like Ink 87 is in a tough position because they need to get this on as quick as possible, as that count just keep going down, keep going down, and it's 52 does go down. The Hydra needs to play very carefully, they need to pick where the enemies are, and need to find exactly how many shots takes to kill. Oh, it's desperation mode here for Ink 87. They need something to happen, and they need to happen quick. Yeah, it looks like that is going to happen as Ink 87 does take does take control of the zone. It's like they need somebody pushing up in order to like establish a zone of control on that plat. Make sure that Bamboo Dragons cannot get back in. I like the play from the Brella, just trying to put themselves in an annoying position. Great follow up again from Tooth. Yeah, two doing a really good job of being around their teammates when needed. There has to be a bunch of callouts going on right now as two is just making sure if there is, my teammate needs help, I'm right there helping him. Mm -hmm. yeah, we haven't good. really seen a lot of the, the, the K-Pro here this game, but they've also been putting up a really solid scoreline here for Ink 87. Uh, it seems like, you know, while we've got Tooth and Raphael playing the left-hand side, that uh, they've been putting in some work on the right. Yeah, they're going to need that work as it looks like Baby Dragons does take the zone. And the K-Pro does get a pick that's two down for side Baby Dragons. It's like the K-Pro is going to, is almost going down. Look like he's going to stay alive for a little bit longer. Yeah, this is a really tough position to play from here. You'd think they might want to uh, back up into spawn. Deciding to stall a little bit here, they jump out. Um, I think jumping out a little bit earlier might have given them an opportunity to work a little bit more closely in coordination with their teammates. Didn't get an awful lot done by staying there, but good awareness to get out of that situation all the same. Yeah, that Capro staying alive. Making Leader sure he has out. Enough. This might yeah. actually go all the way here because uh, Ink 87 is staggered a little bit right now. They're going to need to win at a disadvantage right now, and that's not happening at the moment. Two is able to one. one back. That's able to two. Two. That they might, might have. They need to displace that Hydra. That Hydra has the potential to take out multiple players. Great 
flank from Tooth, and they do it again. Yeah, like we've been saying for the entire set, Tooth is just being where he needs, when he needs to be. Oh, and great use of the bucket to get over the top of that Brella. That's a two-for-one trade. Ink 87 still in control. It's desperation mode now for Bamboo Dragons. They really need this push to work, and they only have 10 seconds to make it work. They need to get in there now. They don't even have time to farm for specials. They might if they had the, till the end of KO, but they have two seconds left, and I don't think they're going to be able to do it in time. Wait, they neutralize. Oh, it's a 1v1. One one. The Hyga is the last one. And the green bamboo is dragon able to does take it. On. Wow, wow, that was what? super close at the end. <laughs> yeah, NK7 just couldn't hold on for long enough, and bamboo dragon managed to sneak their way in with the hydra of all weapons and does manage to take the game and the set. Four ticks was all that it took. If <laughs> If even if uh, that goes even and they're able to just maintain the paint on the zone instead of letting it go neutral, whew, that was insanely close. So great yeah. job, both uh, Ink 87 and Bamboo Dragons. They're able to highlight some really interesting aspects of the game through their comps there. Um, thank you guys for watching. This is going to be it for us on uh, our segment of the tournament but that's not it for the tournament we're going to be moving on next to round four of swiss and we're going to be tagging in devi and taku so yeah. thank you everybody i'm jim and this has been toxic i've been here <laughs> and uh that will be us signing off for the day stay fresh you too
Right, everybody, welcome back to Minnow Cup Splat Zones Edition. I am Debbie, Ooh. joined by Taku. Hello, everybody. Happy Sunday. See, we had we had the OG Griller Squad come on. Now we from the past. Now we have the present Griller Squad coming on here, and uh, yeah, we just got a whole takeover today. <laughs> but Griller takeover, baby. <laughs> we're going into round four, and we've got. Uh, Jay Croutons versus um, Crimson, Crimson Quake. Quake. Um, okay. So I don't know too much about uh, either of these teams, but the names are cool. <laughs> Although we had yes. a we had a we had a, a a French vocabulary discussion for Jay <laughs> Croutons earlier, and <laughs> we're just like we have the J and the Lay, and I'm like okay. <laughs> <laughs> but anywho, we got these teams readying up. We're starting on Manta Maria uh, for round one uh, for this uh, game one. Sorry. Followed by Muscle Forge Fitness and then Humpback Pump Track. Um, I, I have no expectations right now on what we could see. We could see meta. We could see off meta. I just love to see what teams bring. Yeah, no, definitely. And with it being zones on Manta, I mean, there could be a bunch of different comps that are going to come into play here. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We see one one team is already ready to go and locked in, while the other one's definitely taking their sweet time, deciding, finding their builds. Um, something to note on Manta that we have seen is the mast control. And uh, earlier we saw... Uh, slosher control on Bunker as well, so it'll be interesting to see if we have uh, similar types to a past comp we've seen on the stream, or if we got Definitely. something new. And here we go. <laughs> let's see, zone, zone, zones. Zone on Manta. Let's let's see what we got. All right, Expo, Expo, Expo Splash, Enzap, Rapid. Ooh, the Rapid's a nice choice on this one, especially for left side lockout. Uh, yeah. That Rapid's going to give that Expo a hard time if it can get in. Oh, definitely. Well, it looks like teams are starting off trying to get their specials. They've already popped off an armor for the Le Crouton side. Mm -hmm. Already early armor, and uh, even though an early armor popped, both teams going even for two for two. But uh, oh. it is... Uh, ooh. I That's take that a back. <laughs> <laughs> Jay Croutons coming in with an early, uh, early delayed wipe here as they have the zone control and they did win that fight. So they get an early chance to lock out uh, Crimson Quake here and they're doing a good job here. Like the Rapids on this left side um, watching out, but it looks like Bloody makes it in and is going to look for these couple he picks here pick. with the teammate. They do get the picks and the zone, so that is now uh, two down on Jay Croutons, and the controls just flipped. Oh, nice jump Ooh, pick nice, by the good. Team. That was really nice. They do have to be careful, though, because it looks like they were there by themselves, so... And it was it a... Like... <clears throat> Go ahead. Go ahead. It was, a, it was a nice read by the 52 there, just seeing how they were coming up the wall, keeping the height advantage. Uh, very nice re read. So, but as it's going, it's 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 going two 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 uh, a lot <laughs> during this game. Yeah. We see leads reclaimed by Crimson Quake already, and this explodes in a nice spot on Bunker. They do have Baller at the ready uh, in case anything happens, but it looks like when opting to back up uh, as these specials from J Croutons are coming out now. Yeah, and and that explode was doing a really good job at just sloshing and keeping the and the other team at bay. So. And it looks like Jacques Croutons has pushed back in. It looks like, oh, the baller has been popped. So. That missed placement. That missed placement to trap the baller. I feel, oh, I can feel that expo. Oh my goodness, unfortunate. Trying to use the baller to escape, but then Toxic Mist just gets it trapped in, as if it was stuck in gum. <laughs> De yeah, definitely. The Croutons looks like they do have uh, really good paint coverage right now. They've, they've taken complete left and right so they've they've got the paint coverage down mm, they really do uh something j croutons has is the extra range however uh they are still behind if they keep control of this they should be able to reclaim lead as they do have two members down on crimson quake uh very close to lead three down this should be lead for them yep there it is very yep. nice control they do have uh the range uh compared to crimson quake 
Uh, so we can see this is coming to come more in handy when it comes to the lockout. This rapid does see the explo, but this is a nice take drop down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, uh, the splash saw that opening there, and good job on getting rid of the blaster. And then, and this is this is very good back and forth between these two teams. That was a great double by Matt. Mm -hmm. Coming and in, they're getting the like, double. Yep, and they're they're starting to take back their paint control now as well. So now they just got to keep the control and see if they can get that timer to tick down. Mm -hmm. And something that uh, Crimson Quake has is the weapons that can definitely paint more uh, more reliably. Uh, they definitely can keep and hold control. They just have to, again, find those ways around the range, which they are doing. And as you said before, this is relatively good match between the two. Uh, yeah. As we can see, going down each time. So two this down. could still be anybody's game. Uh, they're still fighting for the middle. Matt here blocking nice. that jump. Blocking that jump, that's good. Reclaiming. They've only got 10 points left on penalty, but they are holding these zones with their life and getting picks on top of it. So this is looking good in the favor of Crimson Quake. Yep. Missiles are getting popped, and it looks like this, the Expo is keeping a very good job at just trying to keep them out here on the on that left side. And he ends up getting a pick on the jet as well. Very nice pick. Again, it's one <laughs> point difference. But, <laughs> that's but they a got the lead oh back and goodness. a wipe! That, that looks like it's going to be game the right deal. there. That's good. That, that was a really good match. Sign sealed and delivered right from that end wipe. <laughs> <laughs> but really, wow. Really good. Very back and forth from both teams. Like, they made both of their comps work to their own uh, favorite. Like, look at the KAs. Look at how even these are. Very like, there's even, not yes. That far off. These two teams are neck and neck right now. And even though uh, Crimson Quake came out on this one, We've still got two two games to go, and these are both really even. It just depends on who's gonna win that final fight. <laughs> Definitely, and and let me tell you, when teams are evenly matched like this, it's it's such a joy to watch because it's they give they do a lot of that give and take, and it it just it just really makes it something just a joy to watch. Like I, I love this. <laughs> Mm -hmm. the, the, you see a lot of amazing uh, things in in like low level. Comp you think um, a lot of people don't anticipate to see this much action in a, a lower cap scene, but mm -hmm. you see a lot, and it's amazing. And they deserve the re this recognition. And <laughs> this is how Definitely. they keep going up. That this also brings like people come see, and they can give like tips to them because they're on the right track seeing matches like this it just it just makes everybody's uh everybody's time so much better and that's it's it's something i really love about this community yeah definitely <laughs> so so on manta maria we saw uh one team had a jet we saw the other team had an explo with it being muscle forge i'm interested to see if they're going to continue with those two or if they're going to kind of switch it up and and uh are they going to go backline list? Are they going to choose different backline options? I'm wondering what they're going to do here. Because one team did have, they definitely had more range over the other, but one had mm -hmm. more faster mobility and paint. Um, definitely. So we'll just see if one maybe adjusts, maybe they'll have a couple other mid-range weapons, uh, or if the other one's going to balance it out with an extra, with an extra painting shooter or something. Um, definitely. But it looks like they're all ready to go, and we are going to... Um, get on our way to Muscle Forge Fitness. Muscle Forge. Let's see who's gonna get uh, get buff from this match. Carbon! I see a roller. That is oh, a Oh, the carbon. other team opted for a backlineless comp. Mm-hmm, backlineless like... comp, uh, but still with decent amount of range. Even though it's backlineless, they still have a lot of mid-range weapons here with the, I believe the shortest being the zap, but the it, rapid going um, down the rapid early. already. Yeah. It looks like there's two down on the Le Crouton side. One jumps out. That's three down. That's almost essentially a wipe right there. So we see that the, uh, that the range is being beaten by the uh, mobility short as they're just kind of coming in and collapsing on these members from uh, Jay Croutons. And uh, We'll just see how these counter specials are going to come in because we've seen both teams use this, use them really well. And again, it's oh, two down from the other way. So <laughs> the the counterplay is successful. And now uh, 
Jade Croutons can maybe try to lock out, but as I say this, two did go down as I was mentioning it. So we'll see if they can maybe hold with their range a little bit, stall it out, let their members come back in, and then they can see if they can put uh, some little bit of a hold. We see the Carbon currently struggling in the street, but it looks like someone yes. did manage to sneak behind, and I believe that was a flank uh, by the shot underneath the trench that did get a pick there. Yes. Yeah, and it, it, it looks like, you know, both of these teams know fairly well, you know, get their specials, push in, and go in together. Um, the Le Crouton side did go three down, and uh, Crimson Quake, they have their map control right now as it is, so we got to see if uh, Le Crouton can be able to push back in now. Mm -hmm. And both of them, again, still going back and forth. Here comes the counter from uh, from Jay Croutons, and it looks like they're going to get it. They're going to trap this yep. jump. Well, that's kind of an unfortunate jump for the jet there. <laughs> yeah. And it looks like a lot of the members are jumping out to be able to come back and push back in together. So at least they, they save themselves in that regard. Mm, penalty is almost over and this Rapid is in a nice spot. Um, as I'm pretty sure it knew it was hitting a couple people from the other side of Snipe. But uh, however, this gets uh, reclaimed by, uh, by uh, Crimson Quake here and the Carbon getting a pick in the corner, getting two Double. picks with the help of a teammate as they have zone now and again the control is shifted and it's just back and forth so we'll see who gets the final counter play and there's still Definitely. two minutes and 30 seconds left in this game yeah there it's I'm, just like manta maria this one's definitely going to be another fun one to watch so it looks like two of them did drop on the on the right hand side here for le croutons very very particular place for that carbon to be <laughs> It was actually a good placement, and uh, it was, and uh, what is it? Their their team had a very nice armor pop because that carbon actually had a lock on one of the members there underneath yep. the booyah bomb. And if it wasn't for armor, the carbon would have taken another victim. Definitely, <laughs> and and we see here that the uh, 52 has pushed up into their oh! into into the team's uh, street there and has gotten a double and an assist. So, wow. <laughs> Now with that uh, potential delay, as uh, there's three members guarding the zone here, this is a lead That's reclaim lead. <laughs> for J Croutons, but it still is not over yet as the counter push is trying to initiate here by Crimson Quake. Carbon. They do get a pick on the zone. The Carbon, Carbon gets two. another pick on the zone. <laughs> Carbon three? <laughs> Question mark? Yes, Carbon there it three. is. <laughs> Very nice cap, especially with the Carbons getting those picks on zone, just using the splats as extra paint allows them to get the cap and now firing this auto bomb rush just to spot people out keep them back distance this uh the jet you can see is doing good at zoning we see armors coming out from both sides, both sides. counter mm -hmm. from j croutons is coming out now yep this is coming down to the like... wire and there's only two left oh man One is, this is 52 11 can seconds. the 52 neutralize can he get it <laughs> oh was that alive oh my god, <laughs> oh my god. We're a 1v3 for oh, the 52. Man. That was such a valiant attempt. You gotta give claps that was to the 52. So good. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I I send my applause. I mean that was that was that was a good attempt right there. <laughs> Absolutely. My god. Again, back and forth. Both teams know these counterplay. Again, KAs aren't that far off. They are both very close, neck and neck in this case, uh, Crimson Quake uh, found what they wanted here <clears throat> in that in that game. So that ends up being uh, two for Crimson Quake as they take the set. But we are going to hunt back. We will see if Shea Croutons can win this counterplay matchup that has been happening between these two teams and uh, see if maybe something will change up or if they're going to run the same. But it all comes down to those uh those team fights in those counter plays that are really mad or mad like coming into play they're yeah they matter yeah <laughs> they matter <laughs> can't find the words <laughs> yeah no definitely and i mean with 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 humpback you know you have 
you have all these dips, you have the, the, the flank options on the left and the right, you know, you've got your window, you've got your hill, you know, there's just so many places that, that people can push in from where you can, like I said, you can get off those flanks and it's just, it's going to be very interesting to see them play on this map. I would love to see the carbon return on this map. Um, this is yeah. a map fitting for it. So yeah. if, it, if it changes, I'll be a little surprised, but we'll see what it would change to. Um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah. I can see relatively similar comps coming out from both sides because we see the one range and three and three more front shooter uh, with versus like three midline and uh, one shorter shooter. So we'll see what happens here. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and I'm so because of that that last match. Um, I'm wondering if we're gonna see the return of the backline on each side, or if they are going to continue to go backlineless. So I could see the explosion um, coming back right here too. Yeah, ex expo on on this map. Um, it's so tends punishing. To be really good. Mm -hmm. It's so punishing. It's almost like just constant missiles on you, almost. Yeah. Um, but in just a single slosh. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, it looks like both teams are ready to go, and I'm excited to see how this match is going to go. Mm -hmm. Just a reminder, it is 2-0 for Crimson Quake, so this is a chance to see if Shikrutons e can take the game off. E-leader, and we see a dynamo coming out here. We don't see the carbon, but a dynamo instead. Also, the interesting pick for this one would be the end parries. We haven't yes. seen end parries in a while, and this is uh, very cool to see with the inkjet possibly coming over to see if it can distract uh, from the window there. Definitely, and I'm interested to see how the knot's gonna do on this map as well. So it looks like armor has come out, and it looks like Le Croutons does get a pick there. It looks like uh, 2v2 currently, so... E-leader's <laughs> trying to get the pick on the knot. <laughs> Back to the even play, even like, still, there hasn't been any full control of the zone. It's been uh, two and two. Uh, this Ooh, E-Leader careful. looking to try to get this snipe on the inkjet. You can see it's so close, but just off for each shot. But the Knot still doing a good job uh, zoning out the members that are trying to come in. But as I say this, they go down. I didn't see to what, or... but... <laughs> They're oh, 2v2 now. There we go. There's, that, these... there's still that even matchup. Oh, the drop roller oh. coming in handy there. Yeah, or it was a drop jump or, or a dodge. I didn't quite see, but the the dualies there just dodging that uh, potential camp that happened and looking to see if they can maybe find a pick on this knot. Swimming slowly, being their own they kind know of that little ninja, there. Oh, and they do get, get the pick. <laughs> <laughs> Dynamo took a swing there. Is he going to be able to get the pick though? That's the question. Oh, mm. oh doing a good no, job spacing. Not quite. I will say, they're doing a good job spacing, watching where this E-Leader is uh, looking. Does get the pick on the E-Leader with the Booyah Bomb, is moving forward, did try to get the jump out. Uh, I did Dynamo see Armor, if mm -hmm. I'm not mistaken. Armor was out too, did definitely help there, because the Dynamo Flicks are deadly in this position. Yes, that Tidal Wave is not very fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's just whoosh. Wait, what happened? Oh, that happened. Yes. But it looks like they are keeping good good control right now as to you know keep the zone. Armor and Inkjet are out. They may have to give up the zone just to just to be able to get out alive. Mm -hmm. One thing I did notice is that it looked like um, uh, J Croutons there. They played they played on the zone uh, while um, Crimson Quake was uh, looking to find their ways in. They didn't really have those drop offs really locked out as they wanted to. So Crimson yes. Quake did have a free path to the zone there, so it was a potential force to back up, uh, mm -hmm. which I think J Croutons could add a little more pressure forward when they have that bit of advantage. Yeah, definitely. And and we saw that the Duelies had taken off that uh, that right flank to kind of try to go into their into their street there a little bit, but had to kind of reel back to go get zoned. So. Mm -hmm. And here we go, J Croutons with three the three down. down. Now they can lock out well with the Nautilus. It looks like they got two people watching this left drop here. And I imagine the Dynamo and the Nautilus will work together on right slash zone. Um, and it looks like one for one does go down. I believe the leader, I think, sniped the Nautilus and we're countering bomb rushes. Ooh. Oh, the bomb rush went into the bombs. 
Yes. <laughs> the bum rush went into the bum rush. <laughs> and, and this might... Ooh, Bloody would have to be careful trying to go, go up against that knot, especially if he's charged and ready. Very good decision to back up because you could see the knot was Ooh. ready for it. Matt gets the pick on the knot. Mm, very nice maneuverability there, and uh, mm. penalty is almost done for Crimson Quake here. But J. Crouton's not far behind. It looks like they do have a counter here to stop the zone and they recap know? it. No, no. Oh, they knew. <laughs> they got it. They knew. <laughs> yep, they saw it. The dually shots unfortunately uh, missed a little bit there, so they were able to turn around really quick, snap to it, and now uh, it's going and vice versa here. J. Crouton's. If they can keep this lockout, they do have a chance to take lead here in the last minute. Ooh, that the e-leader! That was a good snipe. The rain coming out. This is a good rain. The dynamo here trying to zone people out. This is a fight for neutral to see who can maybe uh, keep a keep a cap here. Yep, <clears> and it's two, <throat> two v two, so so they gotta really be careful here. Mm -hmm. I did miss uh, um, the the cap happening. Uh, earlier, but now Jay Crouton's in control. They do have uh, Crimson Quake that's stuck on their plat right now. Four, uh, three, that's two down. Two, one. That's game. That's game. That is game. This one. This one. It still went head to head. It still. It still went very much toe to toe. But but you know, they the um, Crimson was it Crimson Quake was no the Croutons had it right. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, I'm getting my colors all mixed up right oh, now. Yeah. I so... was backwards at 1.2 and I needed a second to process. <laughs> <laughs> so so that made it 2-1, uh, correct? Yes, it made it 2-1. Jay Crouton's oh. coming in there, winning those uh, fights towards the end there, applying good zone pressure. And again, for that last fight that they did win, they did assume lockout positions, and that really did help them there towards the end to reclaim lead and get the KO. Definitely, yes. Uh, but very, very good showing from both teams. That is, that is, that was such an even set. Uh, just very good on both sides. I haven't seen a set like that, like close, still like adding so much forward pressure in a while. Like I, this is going to be a set to remember it, how close this was just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Uh, there was no, there was no like waiting for something to happen. It's just as soon as they had it, the teams coordinated, went in, countered, ta-da. Woo! <laughs> it's like yeah, no. it's who's gonna win the chess game. <laughs> yeah, no, that was a that big a big applaud to both teams. They they did very very well. Mm -hmm, but uh, congrats to Crimson Quake for winning that set, and uh, I believe that is uh, the end of our of that round. I'm just looking. We still have one more round to go for round five, but we are going to take a bit of a break here and don't go anywhere guys we'll be back more minnow cup stay tuned
All right. We are back to round five uh, for Splatstone's Minnow Cup. And we have two well-known teams here that I'm sure a lot of the chat can recognize. We've got Illumini versus Shiver Me Inklings. And uh, this is the, this, uh, the roster for Shiver Me Inklings is the other portion that we didn't see in Low Ink. Um, so this is definitely going to be a hype round five to finish off the Swiss <laughs> that I know I'm definitely hyped for. Definitely. I'm 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 really excited. I'm really excited to see this match. I I I've I've watched both teams play on different on separate occasions, not from today, but just, you know, in general. And you know, both of these teams are just they're just fantastic. I, I love them both. <laughs> I love them both. I, I remember, what is it? Actually, um, I think when I first got introduced to Shiver Me Inklings uh, was through uh, Minnow. And I just know, I remember seeing the name and I'm like, okay, I'm an instant fan. And yeah, then Illumini, I, I know we've played several times in the past. And then I keep running into them and seeing them everywhere and just seeing how they grow. Uh, it, oh my God, I love both these teams. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I, for, uh, I'm not as familiar with, uh, Illumini, uh, with the, with their whole entire team. I think the, the one that I mostly see around is Gem, and I recognize Gem because I always think of the other Gem because of Gem and that, that we had on Mike on, earlier. Uh, yeah, on Mike <laughs> earlier and who used to be on Grillers, but then, you know, for, um, for Shiver Me Inklings, you know, there's Black Wolf, there's Boshin, and there's uh, Samino. So those ones I'm more, you know, a little bit more familiar with. But you know, we're gonna go into uh, Mako Zones, and uh, I I want to see how this is gonna go. <laughs> Ooh, look at this machine coming out here. You don't see this machine too often, and I'm happy to see it here um, from Sonar. So this will be nice with the the uh, brush coming out from Gem here with the follow up with the machine. Uh, yep. And then you have a, a relatively similar comp that you will, or a standard comp that you will see from coming out of Shiver Me with the remix try, uh, ends up uh, CDS. It has a lot of basic control, um, running a double armor, so that'll make it uh, harder to get those instant picks. We see yep. a splashdown coming down, and I believe the splashdown did get a pick there. So that's a one v uh, or one for one for each side, and it looks like uh, Illumini does have zone currently. So we got to see how they're gonna how. Um... Uh, Shiver Me is going to be getting the zone away. As much as they tried, a Illumini here holding control. Uh, Shiver Me Inklings could not get the control back even after that little advantage. Um, just holding on strong. So, you know, with the, with the Booyah again, but it's painted right through. You can see the Booyah almost doesn't have any effect because uh, half of Shiver Me Inklings team is down is actually on a stagger effect right now. Yeah, and there's a lot of bomb pressure going on. I am just seeing splat bombs being thrown left and right from the Illumini side. So that's really kind of keeping them at bay here. <laughs> I'd love to see how much Gem is just zooming around with this brush here. <laughs> throwing a bomb Definitely. and then just go zoom. Throwing a bomb and then go zoom. But uh, yep. it looks like the zone is finally capped here, but very strong start by Illumini, getting it all the way down to 27. But uh, Shiver Me Inklings now in a strong position here to potentially lock out uh, Illumini. It looks like they do have a lot of them trapped back in their base right now. And this try coming over up. into it. Yes, all specials were up. They did pick the brush somewhere along the line. So that's a really good, uh, good pick there just to not have that uh, brush speed coming out as a distraction here. Try looking yeah. for a pick here in this corner. Has one trapped, but... Uh, armor was saving the day there, but can it just counter? They, they do get a pick. It, yes. Yeah, and it looks like it's uh, one down for each side. Two down on the side of Illumini currently. Well, three down what, now. <laughs> what wow. was Illumini's game is now Shiver Me Inkling's game. This wow. try here doing a lot of work on the snipe, just making it really hard for the others to come back in. And this Booyah Bomb probably going to seal the deal right in there front it is. as they pick the Oh, that was basically from top to bottom. That was <laughs> that was an amazing comeback. My goodness. Woo! From one stagger effect to the next. It's it yeah. was so good to see how Shiver Me Inklings regrouped 
finally got that cap and they moved up right with it. Yeah, and they they had the, they had lockout positions at one point. You know, Illuminate had all specials up. They um, Shiver Me got the pick on the brush, and then it just kind of it just kind of went from there. And that that is how you do a lockout, ladies and gents. And everybody my god that was <laughs> that was great i mean both te both teams demonstrated a really nicely played lockout because it, both teams had each other in a stagger it's just shiver me ended up pulling it off uh better by getting the try installed on snipe i think that really helped and then they got that extra pick on the brush uh from the right side somewhere that we didn't quite see i think yep. that was a very key pick because that brush is, is the speedy one that can get out that can supply jumps for people to get to the other side so yeah. picking off that brush when they did on that lockout really helped them secure uh, that uh, their own lockout. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. And and even when uh, Illumini was trying to push back in, you know, you could still see they were still trying to apply that bomb pressure. And um, Shiver Me Inklings, just, they did a fantastic job of just keeping paint, avoiding those bombs, and just not letting them push back in, so... Mm -hmm. It was fantastic. Also have to do a uh, shout out for uh, Black Wolf here, who's on Shiver Me Inklings, is one of the MIT staff. So uh, Black Wolf putting a lot of uh, work in behind the scenes. So yes, yes. thought we'd give them a little shout out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Definitely, definitely. Show the love. Gotta show the love to all uh, TOs and staff and shout outs again to the ones all running today. We've got like the Moo on the stream and everyone else running uh, help desk and making sure everything runs smoothly. So shout outs to staff. Always got to shout out staff. They do an amazing we, job. We stand staff here. <laughs> Absolutely. If you disrespect the staff, I'm coming after you. Yep. Yep. You're going to have to, you're going to have to deal with us. So <laughs> deal with the Hydra. <laughs> that, that I know a lot of people don't want to deal oh. with sometimes. <laughs> All right. K Skipper, machine we coming have a tent. Out. Mm -hmm. Gem coming out tent. with a classic tent. And uh, I figured we were going to see it at some point. Just wasn't sure where. And tent, and it is, I, I, I can't remember which tent that is. I think it's the Curling Rush tent, uh, which does prove to be really strong on this map, especially from yeah. uh, above or below, just following the shield. Definitely. So it looks like vast majority has gone down to the bottom. And it looks like they're just fighting for control. So it looks like... One goes oh. down, two goes down on the side of uh, Shiver Me Inklings. Black Wolf getting stuck in a corner there, unfortunately, but uh, the, the missiles did help put them there. And Shiver Me is stuck in a tight situation, but that's okay. It's still early. Uh, this is nothing yet. Um, we yep. see a couple specials there. As they do get a pick on the mini, which is helpful, we see armor coming out with missiles as a counter. Uh, it looks like zone is in the fight right now. We see a rain come out when coming off the side. Zone coming in for Shiver Me. They do get two picks on this counter play and bravo for Shiver Me. Yeah, definitely. And so now both teams have control of both top and bottom. Uh, so they're gonna have to try to maybe take some off angles or, you know, get their specials push in together as a team to uh, come in and take that zone. The splashdown was forced and it looks like the duelies does go down. It looks like they are one for uh, one for one now. So all out brawl down below. <laughs> Definitely an all out brawl. And I think that 1v1 on the plot with the machine actually helped. Um... Ooh. Oh, <laughs> off the you hate shield. to see it. Boshin getting the shield at its finest with the bomb. Uh, and that's what you want to see. Uh, but as I was saying before, I think that 1v1 on the side really helped that counter push come in from Illumini. Uh, just keeping the extra range away from the zone uh, definitely helped them. But uh, shiver me here. They, they're getting with the just those little things, just like the bomb on the shield. And they're back in control and about to reclaim lead. Yes, definitely. And there, and there, there is the lead. And they were in kind of a, a, you know, a little bit of a lockout situation. They had two up top, two at bottom. Uh, but it looks like uh, Illumini was able to push in from top. Uh, but it looks like they are uh, at a two down disadvantage right now. So they need to be careful here. Did at least get cap, which does help save a little bit of time. Uh, however, Shiver Me came right back in just to reclaim it, and now they're going to count down their penalty. Looks like missiles are on in uh, in the way, pushing them back down. So 
Um, Illumini does have the height advantage, but uh, Shiver Me does have a counterplay with bombs v bombs. <laughs> and it, lo it looks like both uh, the mini and the heavy for each side go down. So now it's just the uh, just the rest of them. So uh, they're just gonna have to kind of keep paint and try to push back in again. The suction bombs looked like that they did win over the curling bombs as they exploded after the curling bombs went over the zone. So that uh, became a bit of an advantage state there for Shiver Me getting the zone back. But we see more curling bombs coming back down, pushing Black Wolf into the corner once again. And this is a troublesome situation, but I think Black Wolf made it out uh, in time before getting picked. So yeah. two jump outs there, Illumini having control, and they are now going to be on the board counting down yeah, definitely. And if and if Illumini wants to be able to keep, make sure that they keep this countdown going, keep this lead, they need to take out. They need to take those lockout positions and kind of keep Shiver Me at bay. So we'll have to see how they how they're going to go about this. Mm -hmm. Both teams are doing a really good job controlling each other way down in the garden here. Like each team is coming from a certain way and just controlling off the side. Sonar are getting a very nice pick here, but the other two from Shiver Me just couldn't reach it. Sonar's still alive here, being seen out by everybody, but they just can't wow. land on the machine and getting two picks for the one. But Shiver Me in control. They need to hold it for two more seconds. They do have the bomb rush to help counter with the curling just again. They do have the lead control. Missiles again have them down in the corner. There is one up on top causing havoc though. So we'll see what happens here as the tents on the bottom fighting as well. Booyah bomb coming out, but it wasn't put on the zone. It was to push back the tent. I'm not too sure uh, if the booyah bomb was rightfully used there because it didn't actually help the tent and the tent manages to come back and pick them off anyway. Yep, and there's uh, two down on the side of uh, Illumini. So they, uh, they gotta be careful here. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Shiver Me is actually doing a really good job at winning the team fights down below. You can see that they're getting more stuck. Like both teams are getting trapped uh, underneath and back in Garden, but Shiver Me mm -hmm. has been coming out on on top uh, for the majority of the fights. But now with mm -hmm. overtime happening, Illumini did just win that fight. They have control. They need to assume a lockout position here, and it looks like the tent is going to assume that lockout position on top with the help of Sonar and the Fizzies. But their mini goes down. So there's uh, one person down advantage. Uh, Shiver Me Who does now? make something happen here. Time is running out. Can they recap they this? Need to that zone. They need to They got it. <laughs> Just in time too, as there is only three ticks left on the zone. Wow, that was so close. <laughs> oh my God. I kind of held my breath at the end there. I was like, are they going to get it? Make sure you breathe. We need oh. to make sure you're breathing, okay? <laughs> breathe, everybody, breathe. <laughs> But again, well played set by both of these teams, and uh, what I'm seeing is that Shiver Me is coming out more on top in the team fights, uh, because we're actually seeing the even fights happen down on the bottom uh, whenever zone is capped. But Shiver Me just came out more on top in uh, when it came to the team fights. Uh, yeah. You could see them both together, they were capitalizing on the two different angles, using both subs and specials, they had two specials at least going at a time. Um, but it even uh, there was the one fight there where Illumini had the counter, but Shiver Me came out on top uh, after the fight. So they, they kited back really well and still uh, was able to win it there. And I think that one situation that happened uh, allowed to keep control. But Illumini had a very good shot at the end, uh, just did a little bit late for the lockout. Uh, the tent had the right idea. I think they could have did it a little sooner because you could see how far back Shiver Me was. Um, so Shiver Me able to come back in, they got the Booyah, they had the Bomb Rush, uh, they had the Jeez. Papers there in time, so that helped them cap, but came down to the wire. Uh, like I said, three ticks. Yeah, and they, and they also, I believe, uh, they also had taken a two of Illuminize people out as well, if they I remember did. correctly. They did, they did. The Mini went so, down early as well. Yeah. So they had the Man Advantage, they had the Pain Advantage, they had the Special Advantage, but uh, but no, very, very well played match by by both sides, by both sides. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to Illumini, what machine are we going to see this time? Or is You're it right? machine? <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, we're, we're, we're headed to the reef. You know, we've got the bridge going over both zones. We've got, you know, the flanks on left and right side. Um, so many things I, to watch. 
Yeah, there's so many places that you got to watch and be careful. So it looks like they are bringing back the K machine, but they, uh, the other side does have the uh, soda. So bucket for bucket, let's see how this is going to go. Yes, indeed. Bucket for bucket, but uh, still um, the brush coming back as well, but the brush going down really early. And we also see a um, some quick specials, the quick armor popped out and uh, Shiver Me just immediately taking over the uh the uh <laughs> i want to say the Great. enemy base but in this case for just for fitting purposes taking over the enemy ship just <laughs> raiding okay just... <laughs> yeah they've they've completely like once they got control they just immediately pushed up into their street um it looks like brush and ends up are both down on the alumni side and the machine is having a hard time trying to push back in but there's no paint coverage for him to really go down into so they gotta really be careful they need to get their specials together and try to push in and shiver me just proving dominant as another team fight did go down and shiver me again like i say they are proving very strong in these team fights and this brush just trying to go around but getting picked off by the dually shiver me has a solid lockout point and is this going to be 100 to 0 yep. for shiver me it, it looks like it definitely might be. Three, two, one, it is. Wow. wow. Just right off the get-go, such a burst start. Yeah. The brush was picked off early. Illumini didn't have really anything to go off of there. Just shiver me raided and said no. And that was just their game. They won the solid yeah. 3-0. They, they, they capped the zone and they just immediately went in and they just did not let them push back out into their street once you once you get into that kind of a position where you're having your your any kind of possible exit your left your right your middle just being watched constantly it's it's hard to get in and unless you can get those picks and and you know make your way back out but in this case they just weren't able to in a nice case, we did see the brush try to make an attempt, but we saw a uh, black wolf just watching it. Like Shiver Me had every corner uh, watched, and just seeing the brush try to come in and do that solo. I know that's a brush, what a brush would like to do, but in this case, they could not. I think the brush should have tried to wait for them to at least get some kind of pick with another special, uh, and then go in to use uh, their own special on the zone to at least attempt to neutralize it. Um, definitely needed the help of the the bomb support from the brush or just some kind of little extra paint. But uh, Illumini really needed that one pick just to try to get back in from the other side because it was just locked down. Uh, no solo pro no solo play was getting by Shiver Me there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But I mean, you know, both both teams did so well. Those matches were just were just absolutely wonderful. Mm -hmm. Like the, the first two back and forth, we saw how close the second one was. We saw how both teams could lock out on the first one. Both were neck and neck. Like these teams, again, I know Jem made a comment earlier. So when you find teams like this that can go neck and neck, uh, they should be asking to be scrim partners because this is what you want to learn off of. This is this was uh, very back and forth on the lockout situation and both teams can learn from each other off of this 100%. So. Uh, GG's to both teams and GG's to Shiver Me for taking the 3-0 uh, in this uh, final round of Swiss. Yes, and with that, Swiss is Swiss. Is Swiss. <laughs> Swiss is complete now and we are going to take a bit of a break until we get uh, to the top cut bracket. So don't go anywhere and we will be back for top cut shortly. Stay tuned.
Welcome back, everybody. We are in the top cut round one for Splat Zones Minnow Cup. And we have seen some amazing matches so far. And we are about to witness even more with Up the Annie versus Ya. <laughs> oh, I, we were here practicing like... How do we have to say yeah? Is it like yeah, 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 yeah? yeah. <laughs> just, like, just, just going all out for it. But anywho, uh, up the ante, definitely recognizable. Juice, carrot, lemon, hype. Um, and yeah, I believe is more of a pickup. I know the one that uh, I recognize the most is Artemis. Um, uh, the other two, I, I have seen uh, Massa as well. The other two, not as much. But. Um, up the ante uh definitely has um stuff that are basically ready to go they're just waiting on one uh one lock in the other one's waiting on two but we're we're starting back on humpback uh we left it off there going right off the bat with humpback zones yeah definitely and i mean you know ju just as you said i'm not too familiar with uh the peeps on the ya team uh just like you i i only really know of artemis um if it's the same artemis that i that i'm thinking of it's the uh, charger artemis <laughs> um but uh yeah i mean i'm i'm ready to see what these two teams are are, are going to bring to the table here and we're just getting right into it Yep, Splat Zones, Humpback, Pump Track. Explo Squiff combo with a roller. Um, and we don't we don't see a charger here. We see a tri slosh, a rain a rapid, rapid pro. Rapid pro! I haven't seen a rapid pro in a good while. Yeah. Uh, looks like they've already gone for an early armor uh, on the side of Ya. Uh, let's see, Inkjet's out for up the Annie. Rapid's trying to really get that Inkjet. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, Garrett's spacing with it, knows that the Rapid was aiming at it and did opt to back up, but still uh, fire at the straight. So good uh, good cutting back from Garrett there. And uh, mm -hmm. so still relatively neutral here as uh, counters are going off, but it looks like the Flingza does get picked off here. And I think Ya can get a little bit of control but it's just if they can stall off these bubbles. And it looks like those were actually shredded pretty decently, but not fully shredded. Yeah, definitely. And it looks like um, Inkjet got popped once again. Ooh, my goodness. Kaboom? Yeah, I was trying to figure out how, how, the, how they got got. <laughs> we had that moment of uh, service is currently broken. Uh, uh, one second, processing. Uh, Error. <laughs> The error has occurred. Anywho, uh, zone in control by Ya uh, here, but not. Uh, it doesn't look like it's going to be in control for long as um, up the Annie. It does have something to say about it with bubbles, but again, the bubbles aren't really having that much of an impact for up the Annie. They seem to be thrown out, and uh, each time they are, Ya is there to shred them. But however, uh, up the Annie able to get a three down situation there and uh, can start to lock out this exploit in a nice spot here as it's adding pressure on this plot. However, it didn't uh, help enough as the squiff on the, uh, that tried a right approach did get uh, taken down. Yeah, no, definitely. And I mean, th this definitely looks like it's gonna be one of those matches yet again, where, you know, it's just gonna be a lot of back and forth. That Rapid knows that they've gotten a shot off on uh, the person over there on the, uh, the hump side but weren't able to get the pick now they got the pick and it looks like they've gotten two down on the side of up the ante so rapids going for a triple maybe it's trying <laughs> this rapid here is a really good kind of uh like one-on-one -on -one play versus the explo the explo's mm -hmm. got more of a uh parabola uh shot while the rapids a of course is the straight shot but both do around the same amount of pressure. And we could see that from both of them already this game as the Rapid is trying to control the bunk. We saw the Explo try to control it earlier. We see the Flingze here trying to take a side angle to it, but with it leaving the side of zone is relying on their teammates to hopefully still cap it, which they do. Bubbles come up mm -hmm. to secure with the Explo and the Squiff go down. So this Flings is now gonna have to go back and see if they can maybe try to do something or wait for the right moment to pinch with the teammates. Squiff are going down uh, again. 
Yeah, definitely. And Inkjet has gotten popped. It looks like they're they're going for a lockout position at this point to just you know try to they they're ten seconds down for their their uh, penalty and they just want to keep it going so that way they can get a a bigger lead as opposed to up the any. They don't want to get picked here. They want to just kind of. It looks like they did end up losing the zone, but it doesn't look like they're going to have a hard time getting it back. So. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing here is that Ya is doing a really good job at taking down the X Blow and the Swiffer, two really big potential threats to a lot of this team, and uh, they are capitalizing on it uh, big time. So, and Dibs is just here able to stay protected, not stay too overly pressured right now, and just can keep the paint all around, can help that wrap it out. Uh, and yeah, having really great control. Again, the Swiffer going down in exchange for the T-Tech. Yeah, and um, they they actually uh, had missiles kind of help paint the zone for up the ante because they were, um, uh, yeah, was in, in zone when those missiles got popped. So that kind of kind of gave up the ante the advantage to capping that zone and stopping them from having any more, uh, uh, more of a push. <laughs> However, up the ante is now counting now as kind of a reverse there, but the Flingza and the Squiff go down, um, leaving it on a two down, and that is a third picked. So zone is quickly capped and retaken by Ya. Yeah, so now they can go in and do what they've been doing before. They are locking out window uh, really well, so it's making it difficult for up the ante to come in. Ooh, Night snipe that by the great Squiff here. Snipe. Great peek by the Squiff, and that is something that. Uh, a lot of good Squiffer players are able to do just read that quick pop and ta da. But they, they unfortunately were unable to cap the zone in time. Uh, so the first game going to Ya. Yep. Yeah, de uh, Ya was just able to kind of keep them at bay with those lockout positions. And, and on occasion, you know, you would see someone from Ya go and take the the right flank on on the elbow side by that little bumper and you know kind of be a, a distraction while the the rapid would kind of shoot in or you know bombs would get chucked or you know whatever the case may be and that really just kind of helped them you know let the timer run and keep the other team at bay so in the middle of that game, like I said before, Ya had a really solid lock on the Swiffer and the X-Blow. Uh, we saw the Swiffer was one of the top frags on that side, but I know there was a lot of times we saw it uh, go down about the same amount of times that they got uh, the KA. So it just had a lot of two down situations that Ya was able to take control of, um, and they just had a hard time coming back uh, to the zone and keeping themselves alive. Yeah. Definitely. And with the next match here going into uh, New Albacore, you know, you have a lot of the the great area. Um, you've got the, you know, the little snipe areas on each side. So, you know, if you're using, you know, for example, like an Explo, it's going to be a little bit harder to hit the people on, you know, on those grates. So I'm kind of interested to see what's going to go on here. Mm -hmm. I don't think we're going to see an Explo here. You don't see it too often. I know some do mm -hmm. bring it anyway, and it can uh, be a nuisance when you have uh, the synergy to pull it off. But something about these two maps is that they are maps where you don't actually have to continuously play your side. Yeah. Uh, these are very flip-flop maps. Like, when one team can be aggressive on your side, you can be just as aggressive from the other side, and sometimes it just completely flips and both Humpback and Albacore work the same way in that regard. They both have uh, side flanks you can go around to take, although Albacore is being a lot longer, um, mm -hmm. but harder to hit uh, for that right jump or going left around the wall, uh, one of two ways. But I know when you get that one person in the street, sometimes you always want to focus it, but the teams yeah. here have to realize that depending on what weapon it is, are they actually going to have impact on the zone from over there? Are they going to have impact on you? Can you shift around it? And I know it's something a lot of teams overlook on this map in particular, is that they feed to the distraction and not uh, focus the objective. So we'll see how they play this map. Yeah, and then on top of that, you also have the ink rails that you can take as well to try to get a flank off. So it's going to be it's going to be interesting. So we do see a heavy here on the side of Ya. Um, while we have the Squiffer and the um, 
We we actually see a blob blobber now on the side of up the ante. So I'm vo I'm always very intrigued to see blobs on this map because they can't exactly control the left side of the br of their own bridge um, mm -hmm. as well as they want to uh, due to the fact with the grates that they try to aim for so they are forced to take one of two sides yeah. but um, I know that uh, these players here do know how to work with the blob around that and they can definitely make it work here yeah no definitely and it looks like uh, they are one down on the side of up the ante currently uh, with the squiffer getting picked out of you know once they were coming out of their inkjet um, the blob is you know keeping keeping them at a fairly good distance so that way they can try to recap the zone here. Mm -hmm. And I missed what this Blob's build is, but I know that uh, given a certain uh, build that you run, it can paint a little more because Blob can uh, prove to be actually uh, not too bad of a painter depending on what you're running on it. Uh, the rain causes a lot of support. However, up the ante going three down here. Nice follow up here by Masa and uh, just taking control of this left side. They know that two people are up there um, they are just trying to focus this, and it looks like the tent is just being a nuisance in their street. Just yeah, just this is the this is the the number one rat weapon on this map because you can't <laughs> even run into it when the tent goes down that side. So this is what I'm talking about. This is what I was mentioning earlier: is are they going to focus on that tent or are they going to focus on the zone? Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. And I mean, that tent being there, you know, was just such a good distraction that, you know, it, you know, like you had said, it took their focus away. And, you know, there's only eight seconds left here for up the ante to try to, you know, get it. And that's a double for that heavy. So. Well, that combo that Dibs put out the shield right at the perfect moment just for the Splatling to get those shots through. Uh, you gotta, you gotta both love the splatling tent combo on your side, but absolutely despise it on the enemy side. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. No. Definitely. But uh, yeah, really, really showing to be able to take advantage over here, and the, and again, shoutouts to that tent for really adding that pressure up. We saw that I believe there was two people focusing the tent on the street there. Uh, during that moment when it was being taken. Mm -hmm. um, and that is one of those moments where, like, if the tent's in the street, it can't do anything to the zone unless if it gets, like, over snipe or over bridge to a point where you can actually hit it off. Uh, so yeah. if, it's, if something like a tent is in your base like that, it's a slower weapon to come back. Take advantage of that. And um, don't, like, just let it come back to you because you have the advantage when it comes back to you instead of trying to fight it on the lower ground. And I know a lot of teams miss that on zones for whichever matchup is trying to flank. Yeah, no, definitely. But valiant valiant effort by uh, Up the Annie and uh, good one to, to Yeah. So. <laughs> mm -hmm. So Yeah will be um, moving on to, oh my gosh. I would just like people to know in chat that in round two, this, I don't believe this one's being casted, but Ya is moving on to face Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so what, a, what a matchup there is Ya and Yeah, and I'm kind of like, <laughs> kind of glad we're not gonna come and <laughs> I would get so tongue tied <laughs> if that one was going so, to be streamed. So only one will be moving on there, but uh, it looks like both with round two being. Um, ready we'll probably be moving on relatively quickly here i'm just trying to pull some stuff up um yeah next two teams are good uh so they'll probably be hopping in here shortly we can probably still just keep chatting uh we don't really need to go to break but the next round we are going to see is uh, this is still going to be absolutely insane to commentate we have kraken united versus <laughs> <laughs> I want my best attempt. It's literally just letters spammed on a keyboard whenever you're frustrated. That's ah, the yes. best way I can so, do that. Huh? So, so someone uh, <laughs> just 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 hit their head on their keyboard. Got it. That's exactly <laughs> what they did. <laughs> Alrighty, well, uh, that's going to be it for me for commentating. Devi, oh, as wait, always, I... it is always a pleasure being with you. <laughs> oh my god, it is. Yeah, I totally forgot. So yeah, we would have had to... <laughs> yeah.
Never mind. We'll take a like a two minute swap out. My bad. All good. All good. I know it's it, you're 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 here in for the long haul. So uh, yeah, I'm here till the end. But anywho, <laughs> where can people find you, Taku? Um, well, you know, I can be found uh, on Twitter uh, at Takura underscore Hime at twitter.com. You can also find me locally on Twitch. Uh, same thing, uh, Takura.tv. Um, I do stream a lot of Splatoon. I've done the occasional Genshin stream here or there if my internet will allow me, but my streams are mostly based on Splatoon. Um, I do League, I do Ranked. If you want to just come watch me salt, by all means, that's mostly where you'll find me. Um, but yeah, those are my two. Um, by all means, if I do not see any of you guys the rest of this weekend, you guys have a lovely weekend. <laughs>
All right, everybody here watching right now, no matter where you're at, we are now in round two of Top Cut. And we have uh, familiar faces that we have seen before. We have Kraken United versus Havana, which I am going to call KBS for Keyboard Smash. Thank you, Taku, for that suggestion. <laughs> yeah, very, very. Oh, yeah, and I'm joined by Half very... now. I wonder if they're... <laughs> oh, yeah, hi. I'm... I forgot to introduce myself. I just ran with really Shyvin. I don't know, but I'm excited for this next match. I mean, we got a really, like, common map. A map I don't enjoy, but I guess a lot of other people do. But it's Splatoon Pit, which is very, like, a... I would say... I don't know. I don't know how you play this map. Because there's multiple, like, ways you can get to play this map. But I expect maybe bubbles on this map, because bubbles are really fun. Knowing some things that Kraken United pulls out, and I've recently become a fan of uh, some of the comps that Kraken United pulls out is because they do pull out double backline from time to time and make it work really well. They're nicely synergized with it, so I'm curious to know if this is going to be one of the maps that they do it on, um, or if they're going to pull out one of the more standard comps, but I uh, am not sure what KBS is going to uh, pull out, so... Yeah, no, I expect, honestly, because I'm sorry twice, but I've been way too much in solo queue recently. Um, but I expect, you know, I expect K4 run like, like the bubbles. I think a jet is probably going to be coming out here just because it's a jet friendly map. Because you can kind of sit back and this will farm. And then the other team, I don't know. They look like they have a TTV, so maybe, maybe we'll <laughs> find out. Fortnite X we'll, uh, getting down. But first we'll, match, semifinals. Yeah. And we see the, okay, a junior. Oh, nice junior. And then we see a heavy splatling. So kind of like the same comps here, except like, I mean, we see the jet and the back lineup. I think really what's going to like separate this match is how the kit the twos go and how, who gets the more splat basically. Mm -hmm. Looks like we're going for an early armor off the zap. However, it was too late. It looked like that the heavy on the side of KBS did try to do the early aggressive strategy, which I am definitely familiar with but got picked off by doing it along with a fellow teammate. So Kraken United able to get an early advantage off of that and is now already in lockout positions and does have missiles to counter whatever they are going to try throwing at them. But uh, KBS did have three specials at the ready and they opted to pop them all at once. And uh, the second Booyah coming out afterwards for the force. So now all of their specials have been used and one of their members actually go down after the four specials being used. Yeah, I don't Make know. This three. Jet, <laughs> oh, this jet's been playing like the jet can kind of play same with map. Like no one can really challenge him except for maybe the heavy. He's just gonna sit here and basically, if he controls this the whole entire time, bad dang, maybe a crack United kind of wins this match. We see here, crack United, two specials on each team. Looks like uh, Hishizula is gonna try and go in with their specials. Except the Slaven goes down, so they're gonna have to run with no Buya bomb here. And it looks like Hishizula is gonna have one chance to push in. Usually it's it's cool to see splatlings that are trying to play um, really aggro, but just from this play alone, it looks like that the remix on the side of KBS is actually getting a little too impatient and it's really costing their team here. Uh, they're just not uh, painting out being aware of what's happening or using their point sensors below because usually someone is sharking below and uh, KBS just kind of running into Kraken United each time, unable to get any secure... Um, secure lock on the zone to even uh cap with the team it was just kind of one person would go in be the first to go down then the other three have to recover somehow and uh from what it looked like it looked like the splatling was trying to lead uh, everything almost like more of how a mini or a nautilus would play instead of a heavy no i don't i don't blame his on that map because it's a really bad map i don't like it in general <laughs> but mainly um you know that map is very weird because I mean, you can kind of, it's like kind of a lockout map, like Clan Blitz, I mean, not Clan Blitz, but Prada Pit is more of a, like a lockout map in general, where like, if you get like control, you can basically hold, and especially because the slide never got set up, they couldn't really challenge the general. But next we have a map where you can't, you, you, there's no lockout, you actually have to play special, and that's Blast on Mako Mart, and I don't think we're going to see a slasher here, sadly, but unless, no, I we may, 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 we may see a slasher from Hish Lula, I don't know though. But I think, I think, I think Crafty Knight's gonna run the same comp, maybe this guy's gonna switch to like a Splatling or something, I have no idea. 
Mm -hmm. I, I do I do like that the aggressiveness that that heavy was trying to apply because I know on like pit myself I don't like playing a traditional splatling on piranha pit uh, I like playing more midliner ish as a hydra and I could see like that they're heavy trying to do that but in this, that case they were getting a little too impatient and not waiting for their teammates to help them out so if that uh, splatling gets uh, uh, installed I would love to see what it can do followed with its teammates and for Kraken United we saw it was running like uh, the the mid lines there with the extra support of the front so I think it's going to be relatively similar or they're going to bring out the second back line to help and uh, I know, I know. Uh, even though you, you mentioned the um, the the whole not really lockout scenario and it's specials to come out yeah that's that's going to be the big thing to get out of it but it's still it's still definitely a lockout if you get stuck by your spawn. <clears throat> but it looks like um, the squeezer is changing out for Kraken United. We see a splash coming out, and it looks like um, relatively similar things from uh, KVS. So we're rolling. Yeah. Oh, sorry. So we see the splash. So we see the jet. So basically, kind of the same concept. Maybe with a splash. Side of a K shot, which is Crack United already take control, two down on the side of keyboard, keyboard slam. Um, <laughs> so we have already, I think Crack United even they're more like veteran, not veteran, but experienced on how to put splat zones because splat zones are common. Um, they're trying to get specials. We see twice here just sharking, trying to find that pick. Looks like they see someone trying to kill them. They back up a time, do not get the kill. And it looks like the keyboard are going to try and go in with all four specials. And two go, actually, there's a DC, I think. There is a junior DC on the side of Kraken United, um, but uh, I believe the points are still underneath. So if I recall that, I think, I, oh no, did they stop here? Yeah, I think they stopped. Okay, uh, I think they finally I stopped. It, yep. Under 30? Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I can't remember if it's under 30 or under 50, but under they have 50. stopped, so. By the looks of it, this should be a <laughs> really goes down to the wall here. <laughs> yeah, that is very possible. I've done that a little uh, Not as much, though. As far as we have seen a drift pick. I, I, think, I think one might try to have uh, happened there, but uh, <laughs> being called in in chat that the microwave strikes again. So this is this is apparently a common thing for Kraken United, and I think... Uh, actually now that we think about it that we have seen this actually from the same person in low ink in the past wait that's squeeze i thought squeeze was the squeeze oh no maybe they switched maybe that they did the switch they did switch the squeezer is not present in this game <laughs> well, one thing that's really different is um the keyboard has two blue bombs which is kind of oh i'm it's weird i haven't seen any bubbles because bubbles also are really good on this map but there's double booyah bomb which can basically cap zone if you time it really correctly Bubbles are interesting on this one because you have a pillow directly in the middle, so you have to either pop the bubbles over top or just around the two corners. So I can see why um, uh, bubbles were changed out here for the splat bomb instead, uh, for the more splat bomb and paint, um, while the other has uh, the double booyah, kind of like how Humpback would go, because the booyah can kind of cover more around that side, which bubbles can get kind of blocked off from that pillow in the middle if you launch them on the main level. Yeah, agreed. I mean, I honestly, I think bubbles really interesting, but we, we can't really talk about bubbles because bubbles isn't here yet, but... Nope, bubbles are not in um, this one. <laughs> also, there's double splash, so I think, honestly, um, Kito's uh, bomber is going to get shredded every single time he tries to pop it, especially when going for his own. So there's going to be two Booyah bombs on the side of the keyboard, and it looks like Crack United already have that armor, already have the missiles. Looks like they're gonna probably go in, take control, armor all the sites. Uh, Crack United gets the pop here. Mimikyu, that's probably not his name, but Mimikyu gets one and trades with the spot. So it's 2 2, 2v2 two two on each team. We see Squeak right here trying to cap zone, trying to get some extra points. And it looks like it's a, oh no, that's Kyoto gets another guy. One jumps out from keyboard and it looks like Crack United wins the first fight. Mm -hmm. Kraken United is doing a really good job at winning the initial fights. They have for the past three openings now. Um, but this has been uh, the better opening for uh, KBS that we have seen, where they have actually like neutralized it. But uh, Kraken United still has a lot of control over the zone. They are taking down the primary threats, 
and uh, are still counting down. So the splash is out of the way. Um, Kraken United has two on the zones. Like, look at how they're positioned right now in this nice uh, semicircle diagonal line. The, the double Booyah Bomb timed and synchronized well to get the cap that they need to stop that push. And they get two down on top of it. Really nice counterplay there by KBS. Yeah, I was going to say, every, every time KBS tries to go on, one of their teammates tab to go down. They just can't really do anything off that. But it looks like we have a flank, actually. It looks like Kimo is going to try and chase it. It's the Kega. Oh, the Jet. Watch the Jet in their spawn. The Jet sadly goes down. It looks like Kraken United using that flank as a distraction. Get zone here. He's adding penalty points. Trying to stall right here. It looks like a keyboard is going to be able to get maybe a wipe right here. A delayed wall. Oh, no, the Zap is escaping. Like the splash may escape here. The splash actually gets killed by the other splash. It looks like KBS had a really delayed wipe. And it looks like their penalty points are going to be up to Marcus soon. Something that uh, I thought uh, KBS could have might might have got caught there for is uh, that one member had missiles locked onto them, and they uh, let the missiles come land on the zone. And uh, if uh, if Kraken United uh, push forward or won another fight there, uh, that could have opted to lose zone control. But uh, KBS still in control here. They're they're launching the double booyah bombs. Um, they staggered this one here, luckily, and. Uh, so now they have a couple things to counter with, but KBS looking strong on this uh, on this game here uh, this time around. I mean, unfortunate math. They take the lead by one point, so maybe this could come down to a one point win right now. Is that actually cracking now? Has the armor online? They're waiting for penalties. They're way more special. They can weigh out this penalty right here. It looks like they got the missile. They got the armor. They're gonna try an armor missile going right here. There's no special on the side of the keyboard, so they're gonna have to give us on here. The splatling actually goes down. And it looks like the splash might get the zap here. The zap is weak. And it looks like it's actually a trade on the side of Crack United. Takes control. Trying to just paint out. Trying to decrease the penalty points. There's only 30, 30 seconds left until they take the lead. Mm -hmm. KBS does have armor and booyah bomb at the ready to initiate a counter, but I think what they're going to do is wait for that double booyah bomb opportunity and possibly do what they just did. So armor's been popped. One booyah bomb's going out. Uh, we see the second one. Uh, um, the second one was launched as well. So they got cap back, they got a pick out of it. They do see another one, nice wall placement to allow them to go back around and flee. Uh, it looks like the Splatling's trying to take a pick on the jet here, does manage to push them back. So another Booyah Bomb coming out with Mist, and uh, we'll see who can uh, take the zone back here. I think Crack United, especially like I saw this Kyoto had the, had the bombers there because of the, but because of the double double cool. Booyah Bomb, they couldn't really use the bombers. We have Crack United already getting three down here. K got off to jump out. It looks like they they're, they have no time for special. They're probably gonna give up lead right here. So Kraken Knight is probably gonna take the lead right here. It looks like looks like Kraken Knight is just trying to paint out. There's one special on each team. Looks like looks like Kraken Knight is probably gonna take the lead here as the booyah bombs being popped again. One booyah bomb going out to zone. Looks like Kraken Knight takes the lead and it looks like they're just trying to decrease the de decrease the penalty for keyword right now. Can it looks oh the 52 just short as the is the jet there manages to use its range in the advantage and uh, gets the win there and uh, uh, KBS as strong as they were looking there is now stuck in a situation where they have unfortunately lost two of the team fights so it is setting them a little bit behind but uh, we'll see if they can get any other specials off to potentially fight for this zone to come back and maybe trigger overtime. They did get one pick on the splash, but there are only 10 ticks remaining. Booyah Bomb coming out, Bomb Rush coming out. They did manage to cap the zone. There are now 10 seconds left in this game. We'll see if they can hold control. It looks like trying to paint zone, frankly. Two down on Crack United, except they have to get control here. They have to get the cap. Jet's left stack right now. The Jet's trying to fight someone. Looks like the Jet has to jump out. The Kegel, oh, the Kegel just as well. It looks like Crack United played safe, gets specials. As the zap goes down on keyboard, and look at the oh, no. there. As the bomb rush, as the bomb rush comes out, that's gonna be a clean sweep too for Crack United. Probably using their just, hey, it doesn't matter if we have the lead, we can play it safe because there's two minutes left, and they really take advantage of how patient they play it. Mm -hmm. There was one turning point in this game, and we didn't quite really get to see it too well. But from what I could see, is that uh. I think it was Kito who is up front there towards their freezer. There was a double splat there that happened just above the freezer ramp, and I'm not too sure how it happened. But after that two went down, uh, KBS struggled to come back in from there. They tried to do the stagger of the specials, uh, but they got painted over really well. And um, 
and they couldn't come back in for it. And then they lost a second team fight, which really shut down their momentum. And uh, even though they got it towards the end, the bomb rush was in place to still get bombs on zone. They had uh, the extra support to paint it, and a couple and a member went down. It just made it really difficult for uh, KBS to come back after that first double. That just kind of you could see uh, where KBS kind of fell there. I think honestly, Cracking I played it better. They were playing more patient. They were mm -hmm. kind of like they played it more smart. Also, like sometimes they were they trying on their. I feel like when, um, what the keyboard keyboard the keyboard team on the call now KBS, um, they they weren't really trying to play aggressive. They were playing special game, and I mean, mm -hmm. Cracking I was trying to trying to push up. The Jet did a really good job getting crucial things like we saw on the Kegel right there. I think the Jet probably did the probably did it as a, a job as a Jet. I'm, okay, did its job as a Jet. <laughs> Something else the Jet was doing was actually getting behind as well. You even mentioned like, why is the Jet over here? And they did it more than once too. And I think it was actually a really decent play. I'm not too sure if they were forced over there, but even if they were taking those sides, like we saw them kind of behind on the stack, they were taking an off angle compared to where the other teammates were. Uh, so the, the Jet played that nicely uh, instead of just being like fully traditional, took an off angle to help pinch. And we're going to have the number one seed versus number two seed. We have Cracking United, who you just saw, versus uh, Yeah, who just beat yeah. Young. <laughs> <laughs> uh. so, so it's either going to be, I think, a pickup uh, versus a established team. And I don't know who's going to win this match. I mean, Young, I mean, not Young. Yeah, I think, I think, I think both these teams got first in their group, obviously. So, I mean, I think none of them, one of them, I think, Cracking United hasn't dropped a set yet, and I think, yeah, it has dropped a set, but I'm not sure. You can't quote me on that. Just from looking at the rosters, uh, seeing uh, 577 and Secant on these two rosters, uh, from what I can tell is that, yeah, has is going to have a lot of forward pressure. Uh, meanwhile, Kraken United has that more patient midline play style, so it's going to be uh, really cool to see how both of these play around each other. Uh, just because uh, I know we Seekant on the Tetras has a lot of a lot of flanks that goes off, and if Kraken United plays that more patient style, uh, I believe they have the awareness to catch out on that. But we have to they have to make sure that they do catch out on those flanks. Uh, but there's definitely, from what I can tell from the two already, is that the forward pressure is going to be strong on the side of yeah. Uh, so we'll see how Kraken United uh, puts up with that forward pressure. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've played with Smile before. I think Seekin is a blue there, actually. Yeah, I don't, I don't really know. Then I don't know who Footman Thirty is. So that, that's that's a good <laughs> name. I love that name. I've been doing have... uh, a lot of. Uh, I've done what three weeks of commentary on FNF now, and Seekin's been mainly bringing out Tetras. So that's that's why I'm expecting the Tetras. <laughs> I mean, Tetras are. I mean, Tetras are kind of good in Splat though, because it's Splat. They are. A a it's a classic Splat of map. I mean. Like, what can you do about this map? I mean, it's really about how if you can get that early wipe and you get first control and just see how you play off that. Because this is this could be like a back and forth map the whole entire time. It really could, and we've seen very close back and forth sets throughout the day. So uh, I'm expecting this one to also go really back and forth with these two teams. We see the glue guys. Yep, I think that's a rapid pro deco, which also is a really good choice on this map. We have. We have double double missiles out of the side of, um, uh, I'm not, uh, yeah, and then I think I think we have double missiles out of the side of the jet. Yeah, those are some. Uh, jet just gets, yeah, a lot of a lot of missiles out of the jet. Those right are some funky looking actually, blue guys. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> wait, I said I said, I'm at Tetris right now. Smile <laughs> goes down. Two goes down. Two goes down the side of yeah. Got Seacans able to get that trade with the junior. So they already used their armor though, so it won't matter right here. As we see twice Kyoto trying to strike right here. They know they have Lubi. They're already down six they're already down to sixty points right now. The rap is trying to get this jet up here. The jet's gonna do a really good job just sitting up the attacking miss in their plat right here. As we see as we see, I think um yeah, trying to push in. They miss they get double misses off right here. It looks like they just have to find one tick right here. They see, they see the gallop all right and it looks like they, they're gonna get the gal and it looks like oh, their K their K shot goes down also there's two down the side of Crack United. No specials in play right now. And it looks like, yeah, it's going to cap, cap the zone. Mm -hmm. That 
So that teamwork by yeah there uh, ended up uh, doing really well for them to get the 52, but twice also played that really well and survived longer than uh, than they definitely should have. But as we see, Kraken United is now stuck all in their plat here, and they were uh, very vulnerable to bombs or anything that were thrown at them there. But uh, Keto coming out here with the bubbles. It looks like uh, Pick was get out there, just missed. Oh. I was just like, the bubble missed on one, but did get countered by a teammate just back and forth, back and forth splats here. And uh, it looks like if Smile here can finish painting the zone, but I don't know if they can alone, holding off for as much as they can. But, oh, the missiles, unfortunate that the one zap went down just on the zone beside them and missiles pop just makes them completely vulnerable. Turns it right around, couldn't get the cap and Kraken United is back in control. Cracking United is probably going to push them to the point right here. I think they're going to have to get the 10 right here. I think, um, yeah, it's going to have to begin to get specials. They already have they pop missiles. They have double missiles. They're going to pop on They're going in right now. Yeah, I mean, Cracking United has to back up right here. If, if, if yeah, plays it smart enough, they're going to get zone right here. As he can't trade right here, the Jet coming in with another clutch kill. As the trade right here happens again. And yeah, good job capping the zone right there. Getting a good... As we see the... As we see the carry <laughs> on the last one. Oh, wait, hold on. We have the Tetris of zone right here, actually. Maybe the Tetra is just gonna try and distract them. Looks like the Kegel's not trying to go for them right now. It looks like, I mean, I don't know who's gonna win this Tetra Kegel fight. It looks like the Kegel, oh, the Kegel wins. Mm. And sadly, Cracking Eye is gonna be able to take control. Maybe he'll take with his Puyo Bomb. It looks like already double missed on the side, yeah. Yep. Uh, it was just uh, unfortunate there with the, the dodge roll back into the wall. Uh, so good placement there by the by the K-Gal, and it just kind of goes in and is catching everybody out. Seekin here in trouble, just tries to splash down in defense, but uh, does get picked off. The K-Gal just in the way here, can't find the shots as uh, we see 577 taking that win there and just knows someone's behind him, but painting, they do get the cap here. Um, able to stop that um, from going down any lower, but sitting down at eight right now is uh, is pretty good with a minute and 30 left to go in this game. But uh, with the, uh, yeah, and control, it that might not be safe. Yeah, if, if yeah ends up winning the game, I think that kill on that KO might have been the play of the game right there. As we, mm -hmm. as we see everyone to the jet, really good smart. They're getting the pick right there. We have all, everything coming out to go down the side of yeah. Looks like Kraken is going to take control. The Tetris in the spawn right now. He's going to get out of the jet. Kills him. I didn't expect that to come. Oh. It looks like there's one of the left. The jet's going to take control. Uh, yeah has one more push opportunity to maybe cap the zone and get a win. You could see that the Tetris had the right idea, but the aim was just slightly off. But yeah, the the Tetris had the definitely had the the one v one set there, locked to go. But just the aim was just slightly off. Um, however, we've got the fight in mid happening, but right now um, there's an extra. It's two two v two, and it looks like Kraken United is going to win that two v two. And we'll have to see if the Tetras can somehow make a difference, but I don't think it's going to because they can't paint as much as who's on the zone right now. <laughs> I think Crack United played that really well. They tried when they win like they, when they're offense, they just didn't like feed. They did they really safe. And then when Yeah pushed in, they all kind of backed up. They all had specials because they didn't really need to defend at all. They all went back to the plat. They all popped specials. They got the recap really easily. So like they really had a controlling victory right there. Mm -hmm. They really did. And I noticed a big moment there towards the end when Kraken United was getting zoned back just before the team play uh, was when their zap got picked off first. As soon as the zap got picked off, um, they just moved right in, got another one, and then the two weapons that were left, they can't really paint the zone as well. So they just kind of had to try to kite back and paint the best they could, but that gave Kraken United the control. It was uh, after that one moment where the zap went down first. And um, with that comp that Yaz yeah, running, uh, the zap being the primary painter, uh, for Kraken United to pick off the primary pa painter uh, definitely uh, has allowed them to reclaim that towards the end. Mm -hmm. And notice about the Zexon, I think all the maps we've commented has been jet friendly. Maybe not Mako, but. This one also another jet friendly map where you can kind of you can decide ooh I'm gonna get stay top I'm gonna get missiles or I'm gonna go bottom help my team but also it's another booyah and bubble friendly map so I mean Plot Zones and Comic has really really good bubble maps I don't really enjoy this map but I especially I think as a Hydra you really enjoy this map because especially as a backline you kind of just sit there control and you could basically like just be a wall for your team. 
I can confirm that statement. I can. <laughs> <laughs> so you see, I think that's the same exact comp actually from both sides. It you looks see, like it, the, yep. the rapid pro gecko, so a little bit negative paint on the side of of yeah, but we, there's still more killing power on that side. It looks like yeah is no, it looks like it's a 50 50. Captain Jack's gonna take the zone here. It's two down actually to go on the side. They maybe, they maybe should have gone for the cap right there. Maybe they should have thought right there. It looks like Squeeze can be forced to jump out. And looks like, ooh, Sea Can almost got that kill right there. Yeah, it was very close. Cool. This, this could be honestly the one, one cap that Yao, any, that Yao only needed. Mm -hmm. And now uh, it looks like Kraken United is looking to see how they want to come out here. They do have, they did have the, the the four specials online, and they did pop three of them with the fourth coming out last. What a splashdown right in the middle! I, I knew that uh... was gonna happen, bro. I mean, <laughs> he, was, he, was just, he was just sitting there. He was just sitting there. I mean, especially I just love splashdowning, just jumping and splashdowning. Especially also, you, I mean, Kraken United has to be happy though. They got zoned. They're selling out for a little bit more. I mean, yeah, could have been like a thirty right now, and it would have been. Like not paradise for Cracking Knight right here. As we see missile online for smile. It looks like Cracking Knight is trying to push in. They have missile right, they have armor right, they're popping right now. Two going top, two going bottom looks like. Actually three going top, one going bottom. Looks like uh, yes, yeah, trying to hold here. They all need to find his pick and the bubbles come out and, and the K shot actually doesn't die right here. And it looks like yeah, trying to hold at two down goes out again. Looks like Cracking Knight is trying to just put a bandage on the pain right here and it looks like the cat. Hey, surprise! Like smile moved in the perfect spot just to not get destroyed by the bubbles there, and then unfortunately gets caught in the in the three v one, but did stall for a little bit of time. However, not too much time as Cracking United was still uh, perfectly all there to just get controlled back. And Seekin here trying to rush right in, but with the missiles on uh, twice, allowed uh, Seekin to survive and two others to push from the bottom there, or I think actually only just the one. But I. I thought I saw three others there on top. I, I didn't, yeah, vision. <laughs> Anywho, two for three. And Kraken United is still in control, winning this fight that just happened and uh, now can uh, possibly get their penalty points gone. A Kraken United, I mean, I mean, yeah, cap the zone right there. I mean, that was really good cap for them. Again, stopping the pain right here. The jet, the jet actually goes down inside Crack United, and two go down inside Crack United right here. Is he gonna save special action? Now use special here. They have two special what? online for their counter push right here. And it looks like, yeah, he's gonna have a low penalty right here also because they pushed it twice. And it looks like Footman wants their team to go this way. And they'll almost get the jet right here. Almost a cheeky pick. It looks like, I mean, I think Footman 3 is playing a little bit too. It looks like he might get picked right here as four specials online if the squeezer gets the bubbles for each team. It looks like he's going to. And it looks like we're gonna have a special bonanza right here. You can commentate this David. I love how this rapid is using the wall. Like it almost looks like the rapid's going in too far, but it's not, because then the wall's going back into play and it's actually keeping the jet back um from coming in and just stalling to see if they can keep holding for points. But the bubbles coming out with a pop does getting a pick. See if maybe they can hold on, but that's a lot of paint coming out from the side of Kraken United, but able to hold. Can they hold for the KO? And they do. That was actually uh, quite close for getting the cap, but uh, there's three people on the zone for each side, but with that one pick that uh, Seekant got there, just helped them get the last couple points that they needed, but very good fight at the very end there to try to get the zone control. Yeah, C10 actually, the junior drop by, right? The C10 got the junior, so the cracky guy didn't mm -hmm. have their extra paint basically. So I think that C10 tip really helped them there. And it looks like 1 1. Honestly, I think how Yao went to set it, they just kill more because their paint, their comp isn't paint friendly, but it's kill friendly, especially with that Tetris mm -hmm. and K shot. And uh, I definitely think that is Yao's goal, just again, from how I said from the start just knowing a couple of players at how they play more of like a, a frontline style or like the weapons that I've seen them play uh, from not too too long ago. Um, there's a lot of forward pressure. And from what we've seen is that they have one really paint reliant weapon, but they do have a lot of follow up and they are relying on getting those splats so that they can maintain control. Um, with the uh, Kraken United, they have a couple, they have a couple extra painter but they usually have that extra mid-range to kind of counter and pick out someone who's trying to come around from afar, uh, so then they don't have to fight as head-on, because we all know that fighting uh, head-on 1v1 Tetras can be difficult, uh, just trying to read their movements. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah. 
I was gonna say this, it's Reef Zones. Honestly, the jet, again, doesn't bring the jet map, especially with Yaz Comp. They can't really challenge anything. The Rapid has basically dropped, and if Crack United sends a Shark right there, the Rapid's gonna get punished. It looks like, unless we have a comp change. No comp, there's been no comp changes mm -hmm. as well said, which is like crazy for me. But another, I think this is, I think this is where Kyoto shines with Bubbles, because Bubbles, all you need to send is three Bubbles and you get the whole cap right here, which is, and we already have an armor. That was what, eight second armor off the side of the very quick, yeah. I mean, we have we have seen, uh, oh, actually, never mind, we haven't, but uh, quick pick on the 52 on uh, Kraken United side, so now opted to push back as we see the rapid shots coming in as the missiles are landing. So what a good try to follow up with the missiles there with that rapid. Uh, very, very nice job moving in with those missiles. And it looks like, oh my gosh, the tetra is going to go down. We have four special online. The smile's going to missile off four right here. The bubble's going to the zone right here. Maybe a little bit too aggressive right here. It's actually, they get the capture. I don't know how the bubble survived from that bomb. The smile's going to be caught in a double. Armor. Uh, armor there yeah. was <laughs> armor up. And I was also looking at the same thing. Like, that was such a good attempt with the bomb throw. It was very close. But armor was up. Bubbles was out. That was a very solid counter by Kraken United. And uh, they're going to retake lead here. But again, still really early in this game. And uh, Seekin here, we see, is getting uh, getting picked off in the street here. So uh, Seekin having a little bit more difficulty trying to find their way out to do more Tetra-style things. Um, getting caught out again. Uh, I just saw on the camera ahead, uh, Seekin dropped and gets caught, gets getting caught out by this 52 uh, twice here, putting in a lot of stalling pressure just up at car and under the plat. So uh, yeah, can't move. He and that is number three! <laughs> Seekin is stuck, and that is what is going to enable Kraken United. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I think, so I think honestly, if Kraken United wins this game, looks like actually the. Wait, no, hold on. No, okay, never mind the bubbles. Too, but, <laughs> the bubbles. But I think, actually, I think we didn't, when we said the Tetris go down, I think uh, Twice got two in their spawn, and then he mm -hmm. got the zap, and it kind of just ruined the whole the push from, yeah, and it looks like, I mean, Kraken United really just like. Should, we're probably just mad over that last match. I just took it out on this one. <laughs> uh, twice for sure, definitely did. Uh, <laughs> but we were watching from the jet view on the bridge, and we, we saw that this way as they were, weren't were sure of the control that was happening on bridge. But I just kind of peeked up for a second. I'm like, hold on, two are going down. What is happening? I look up, and the I kept seeing the... the... like the like the weapon squids on top of the screen as they went like they respawned and went down i'm like the tetras is struggling here and that is kind of like the main initiation focus for yeah and then when we looked in it's like the 52 is just holding ground in their base locking out there while the rest of the others are just kind of behind but they don't even have to move up that far just to add extra support so the the tetras tried to go the same way it looked like three times and got stuck there for three times special and shots so yeah, just could not move, and that's what shows where the that range comp is going to thrive. I mean, this next match, again, another jet-friendly map. I don't know, I think this is maybe, maybe, maybe and, a jet person picked this map. I don't know. This, is, map this is just where we say, you see jet almost everywhere, yeah. whether it's the vanilla or the other one. So, no matter which map we're going to see, you could always see a jet on it. But here's the thing, are we going to see something other than a jet? I'm sorry, jet players, I still love if you're a jet main, but seeing another thing other than a jet is fantastic. I don't, I don't, <laughs> think, we, I don't think we will. I think Cracking Knight wants to win this set. <laughs> and ne Okay, we see the Nod. The <laughs> Honestly, that, I think that's the first comp change of the set, actually. So um, The Nod, yep. Okay, and we have right here, I think Nod actually really smart pick right here, especially when you're offense, you can kind of use the Inkjet to kind of take control of their play right here. As we see, they're not already doing aggressive play, taking their fan. Cracking it, probably gonna get the first zone cap, but we already see missiles. Already see a, a bunch of missiles, a bunch of specials already being caught. Oh right my here. gosh. No kills, I don't know. And the Tetris had to get, again get caught in, by the, uh, the K-Gal. It looks like two down on the side of, yeah, and it looks like Cracking out it. It's gonna be able to take control of the, the, uh, the what the is it? The not. I know, I know, I don't remember seeing all oh, the. And then the Tetris actually, never mind, it's not gonna do anything. The Tetris comes out of nowhere, gets the kill. And it looks like Yaz trying to push in right here. Yeah, it's really trying. They got everyone locked up in a corner, so that was a 4v2 in that corner, and now they are just looking to find this other player, which they see on the fan. But the 52 getting one before they're getting caught out themselves. 
So at least there was a trade in effect there. I mean, honestly, if I'm, I'm, if I'm, yeah, I'm like, okay, there, K goes down, and, and then, oh no, or K shot goes down, I was gonna say. Looks like Seekan here is gonna splash on, maybe it's canceled. No, it doesn't get canceled here. They actually take the lead, yeah, it takes the lead right here. They see this jump right here. Oh, the jump came too late for the ink to this match, up. So it looks like Kraken United's gonna have a low penalty, gonna take probably the lead right here. Actually, no, we already see double missiles gonna be popping inside, yeah. It looks like Kraken United's gonna have to back up, it looks like, yeah, it's gonna prevent that lead from coming. Mm -hmm. Very, uh, very interesting plays here done by both teams, and they're both relatively close here, but it looks like, I was going to say, as one gets caught out in the corner, there was another one present, so the uh, the 2v1s being stronger on the side of Yeah in the corner, but the Jet getting another pick in return, so it's just going kind of back and forth here, but Yeah is proving to have more of the control on this uh, game so far, as we see Seekant trying to maybe move up a little bit here, but they're just... Uh, taking their time in the corner uh, for the time being. And it looks like there's a point in the twice. Right. Yeah. Looks like they're not going to get straight here. They're going to die here probably. And it looks like cracking out good stops. They're going to get zone right here. They're going to probably get some K shot. Push on the snap. Actually, you're going to get the Tetris right here. This, oh my gosh, the K shot survived. Got the landing. It looks like he's maybe going to get the junior right here actually. The K shot just trying to stall, trying to let Yak cap. And it looks like the junior is going to jump out right here. And it looks like Yak is going to take control with the K shot and stall. Junior in a position if they moved. I think the knot definitely had their numbers, so uh, good job jumping out there. But uh, K-Shot going to move up here as Yeah does have control again, seeing if they can maybe somehow get a lockout done up here. But uh, armor popped and the knot dropped just to see, uh, just to get that pick. Oh, Keto's on fire right now. <laughs> I mean, Knot is really good on this map. It, it really is. And here comes the inkjet. Keto's going for more. Uh, we'll see if they can maybe find, did wait for that jump, another opting to back out. Uh, Keto says no, as uh, Kraken United has control, and uh, now seeing if maybe they can get a lockout potential to potentially reclaim lead, but it looks like that they do have some threats in the way, but they did eliminate the Rapid, but the Tetras are out on one side, another coming out from the other, this is a nice pinch, it's just the K-Gal left alive, they get one pick, Twice here, holding the zone they best they can with their missiles, unfortunately can't hold it themselves, but is doing a great job staying alive, but they're probably going to get shredded here, yep. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I'm not mad with twice right there because that, like, cracking out move in. He didn't use the Booyah Bomb, so he still gets, like, half the special right here, and it looks like, honestly, like, I think Yao is just playing this really smart. They're, kind of, they're not getting the most kills, but they're playing it more together, I feel like. They get a pick on the Junior right here, but the Junior is the armor right here. There's going to be less pain. Looks like yeah, it's going to get removed their penalty right here. Actually, the Tetris goes down and looks like Kraken is going to cap right here. Mm -hmm. Kraken United getting the cap. Again, it was a good pick on, or uh, what is it? Even with the Junior down, they were still able to cap. And now it looks like Missile's coming out, pushing them back away from the zone just to reposition. Uh, they do have the range to uh, just try to stall a little bit as they can, even though... Um, yeah, that has reclaimed the zone. The knot is still in position, but this rapid, I mentioned this at the start. This rapid is doing a really good job at following up when missiles are being launched. They're using the missiles as a base damage while the blast comes out to finish it off. And that is what this rapid has been trying to do. We see Majority twice here with another flank right here, getting two actually. Yeah, I mean this rapid flank really well. Getting the gig out right here. It looks like 13 right here. Oh, this is going to come down to the last push, I think. I think yeah, I just need to get the special right here. I mean, honestly, I think if I'm, if I'm yeah, I'm gonna have, I can't have the Tetris speed right here, like we saw the last match. That just kind of hurt them right here. And I think Debbie's probably gonna take us off maybe for the last game where we're gonna. Play <laughs> <laughs> Kraken United needs to hold this because the score is currently two one right now. So Kraken United needs to hold this as much as they can and they got the wipe so this is kraken united's game and uh i believe this was a best of five set and i believe it was yes yes kraken I mean, united yes, to win the series you know cup is known for its short tournaments not <laughs> short tournaments but like very very smooth very fast tournaments for grass good for kraken united i mean i mean i haven't seen a zap win middle cup yet I'm, 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 no, okay. but um i think yeah played that really well um, yeah, I mean, not, yeah, I played it really well, but it honestly came down again to, like, Crack United, ha like, has been, this whole set being really good defensively and just holding off, yes, pushes, and, and but like we saw in the semifinal match, just holding off <laughs> of the keyboard's pushes, and I think, yeah, really deserved that. Mm-hmm.
Cracking United, what they did is, uh, what is it? Yeah, had the comp for when they had control, they could have locked out. Uh, they could have triggered a very nasty lockout against Kraken United. But there was always some ranged weapon there in their way up on top that could just drop and get one of the short ranged weapons. And then they just kept countering really well and figuring out where they could catch off. It almost looked really um, rough there in the middle when uh, the when we saw Seekant do a left flank and got three, followed up by another. And um, yeah, I was playing really well there, but never really got the lockout they wanted. I think uh, so. It allowed Kraken's United range and uh, follow up with specials to really help them get the end there. And that final wipe just sealed the deal, and that set was theirs. Mm, agreed. Honestly, I think I don't know what happened there. And honestly, I think Kraken. I don't even know. Like, I think just I think yeah, kind of just like they missed. And they're like, oh my gosh, we're gonna go and bring it this for free, and they didn't really get it. I mean, I didn't see how much mm -hmm. the not had, but I'm assuming the not had like 13 that game, which I think the not. <laughs> I think the not really helped in that game and really helped the whole set especially with their especially with their bubbles but congrats to Kraken united winning grand finals 3-1 over yeah really really good job um i'm surprised they even won out of the they were the only last regular team on semifinals and they ended up winning so congrats to them and i don't know it's, about the third place match i could check uh, that right now third place mass is still going it's currently 2-1 for ya um but that one is still happening right now. So it's either it's game point for Ya right now. But that has yeah, not finished yet. I don't think we're going to stay on for that one, though. That, that <laughs> Unfortunately. Be... So... Especially with Splatos, that could last for like six minutes. <laughs> <laughs> we thought it's about as clampless, though. But it's, we'll it's find out in the announcements. Yeah, or just check the bracket that. and keep refreshing. You should, check, <laughs> you should join the Discord server of the that MIT. Too, yes. You'll see that Go now. join the Discord Mino, server, everybody. The Minnow Cup thing moved over there, and it's <laughs> sponsored. Not sponsored by, but I don't know. Like, owned by MIT? Or, like, I think it's owned by. I mean, I don't even know what the term is. <laughs> We're making <laughs> work. Trying I mean, to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, uh, that does it for us. So, again, congratulations to uh, Kraken United for winning this Splat Zones edition of Minnow Cup. And that also means the ends for us, and it's time to sign off. Half, where can people find you? Uh, basically only on Twitter, because uh, I usually don't stream a lot. I've never streamed actually, but you can find me on Twitter at 12 of 341, so that's 1, 2 of 341. I don't, I don't, I haven't been tweeting recently, but you know, I've been just chilling on there, saying hi to people, I guess. You can also find me on Discord, just roaming around playing some pickups. But Debbie, I know, I know you stream. I know you're, I know you're a really big <laughs> fan of Hydra. So where can people find Hydra gameplay? Where you can find Hydra gameplay? Well, I'll post uh, my clips and stuff on Twitter as well at Debbie Doovy. Um, but you will see my play on Twitch, Devi underscore Doovy. I usually tend to stream my perspective when it comes to team play with the Grillers. Uh, or if I'm doing pickups or drafts, I try to put a stream on, but I usually stream Monday afternoons, uh, whether it's Splatoon, where I try to struggle through solo queue and do my best with it and go from there, or just some other fun game where I chill with the community. So, yeah, that's where you can find me. <laughs> so, I mean, thank you, MIT. Thank you, Minnow Cup, for having us. So really, another, another amazing turn by Minnow Cup. I don't know what the next tournament is going to be. I'm assuming it's TC. I haven't seen that in a while. Maybe Clan Blitz even, but I'm assuming it's TC. But, you know, Flat Zone's always just a basic, you know, m probably the most played ranked mode. And congrats to Crack United for winning, I think, their first Minnow Cup. Remember to tell your friends about this tournament, everybody. Always like seeing new participants uh, coming into Minnow Cup and uh, seeing how they do. It's always great to see new members of the community. Uh, getting out and yeah, big shout outs to the staff to the move for running stream and staff and help desk Just making it run smoothly as always. So good job to staff and with that. Uh, I believe we are all done with the outros. So Have a good day everybody or night wherever you are and uh, we'll see you for the next minnow cup
Thank <laughs> you.